you didn't expect a stream today, huh? You thought that after a long weekend of War 3 Champions, I would take a break, but hells no! Neo doesn't take any breaks. Neo is casting FFA Masters League as it is Monday. Not really 8 p.m. as usual, but uh, 9 p.m. at least. And of course, I couldn't do FFA alone because the games are super long and I got no clue what's happening. So I got FFA expertise by my side. As every Monday, I'm with rulers. Neo humble as always. Of course, you have a great clue about FFA already. So yeah. Can't wait for another nice game. Welcome. Hello, hello. Uh, this is the first time we cast the FFA Masters League rulers. So would you please introduce this wonderful league to our audience? Yeah, so FFA Masters League is the best um, FFA league out there in the world, in the universe, maybe. <laughs> so yeah, we have like 20 to 30 players, I think, like more like 30 players. And there are four play days. Currently, we are at play day number three. So every player that participates in this league is going to have four matches throughout one month. So one match per week, uh, which is pretty much randomly assigned depending on the schedule, which is done by Hightech, who does a great job as always with that. Um, so yeah, currently play day number three. We have the scoring system that we had in the tiebreaker. So if you win, you get 20 points. If you're second or third place, you get 12 points. And if you're fourth place, you get 10 points. And the highest score gets three additional points. That so, is... Yeah, so? So, <laughs> do you I have to... I was about to take to... over, but okay, just go on. No, 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 no. <laughs> do you have the current uh, standings? Or should I send them to you? I have the standings, but I don't have them open. Give me a second. Uh, standings. Yes. Got it. Of course. Prepared. As always. <laughs> All right. So we had only one game so far in play number three. And DV won this, which brings puts him in the lead currently at 61 points. Then second place with two matches played is Dice tied with Bobby. And yeah not far behind Sheik and Lil Wami, so a lot of well-known players, except for maybe DICE might be a little bit of a surprise in the FFA scene. Yeah, definitely. We've seen him before in uh, Team Battle Royale. He wasn't super impressive, but he is learning and uh, we are learning as well. I'm learning that there's not only uh, two great casters in the FFA scene with high tech and rulers, but there's more and there's especially one person who is casting so far every single FML game, uh, uh, unlike us, lazy bums. Uh, welcome, Ghost. Oh, Neil, thank you very much. What an amazing introduction by the one and only person that kept this scene alive so much so over the years. And yeah, trying not to let the tears come to the eyes here with such an amazing introduction. Thank you very much for the opportunity here, Neil. Um, and my name is Ghost, GGGL. So, Triple GL. And if you don't mind, Neil, can I uh, make the player introduction at this point? Oh, please. We jump into the game and you tell us who's playing and what you expect of him today. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, we have in the bottom as the purple undead is Sheik. Now, Sheik goes with the introduction. However, ironically, I will be introduc introducing him. Those that watch Back to Warcraft will know him. He has a very strong 1v1 uh, player experience, super high level micro decision making, beating the likes of Happy in his 1v1 and it's gradually trans transitioned more and more into FFA over the years. He has adapted to the game mode using good timings to sit back and hoard, know when to strike. I'm super excited for this match. And on the left hand side, playing as a Red Orc, we have Kolbas. Now, Kolbas is an experienced FFA player from Russia. He has more than five years' experience in competitive FFA. He's oftentimes seen at home in his base, awaiting a good time to strike. He has very decent micro and decent decision making skills. But will his experience prevail against the two titans of this scene? I guess we'll find out. And in the top, Night Elf as Stein. Teal is a tenacious player. Good FFA knowledge and time and time again has found himself being able to utilize his FFA skills and recover in his early, if his early F, uh, 1v1, my apologies, but nervous here, but 
in his early 1v1 doesn't go to plan, he can recover. He's very versatile and knows when to sit back and seize an opportunity in the later stages of the game. And now we have Dice here playing as the, again, one person without introduction, but we'll get one anyway. Very well known 1v1 player, Dice, has been coached by Neutron, been shown great promise and development in his game mode with high levels of micro knowledge of the game, shown versatility, and has quickly becoming a dangerous opponent in the FFA scene. I think uh, Sheik is a big favourite in today's matchup. What do you guys think? Yeah, I would agree yeah, with I you. Think... Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I think Sheik definitely is the favourite of this game, but as everyone else pretty much knows that this is going to be the case, might not be very easy for him. Starting position looks very nice for him. He has a good space of this big map for himself. And on the other hand, I have to say DICE is learning pretty quickly. And whenever I see DICE playing, I think it feels like he has a lot of FFA experience already. But in fact, he's not too practiced. But the last few days, I saw him play in the ladder and even played a game against him. So I think he is very, very good. And if he practices, then yeah, we all know what potential lies in him. Yeah, there's a lot of potential, but never a GG. That's definitely what we know from DICE. Uh, so, Ghost, you've been casting the entire FML season so far. Um, what do you think? Who's in the best shape currently? Uh, Neil, you're asking me a very biased question here. I am a fellow undead player, so my eyes are particularly peeled on Sheik at this point. And, uh, yeah, DICE has shown extreme promise, but Sheik has shown dominance in the FFA scene, so... My money is definitely on uh, Sheik here, and as really said, likelihood the rest know that Sheik is super dominant here, and uh, it may not work in its advantage, but yeah, I I, al I also give this to Sheik here, but we'll find out. I'm already curious because we see two uh, alchemists in this game. Yeah, both Colbass and Stein up into gold for Alchemist first. Absolutely amazing hero at level 6 here, getting some free gold. Late game, showing the strengths there. So is able to transmute when they are under the base race uh, position here. So, But yeah, first hero, interesting. Yeah, I think it's a wise decision. Like, against players like Sheik and Dice, you're most likely not going to do well in a 1v1 fight anyway. So it's good to... A plan rather for the late game, for the freeway, for the base race, for the balancing part where you can shine with your FFA experience. And also we know that Slythe is, um, is known to play very uncommon hero combinations like one FML last season I played, he played with Archmage, Beastmaster, Firelord and rushed me, so he's very unpredictable. Uh, okay, he'll go with full Torrent, Bats, Armies. He's a random player and he is definitely earning this name or he's definitely playing quite random in my eyes but has some really fun and innovative strategies so we'll see what he's putting up today. And DICE here with two middle expansions already, keep in mind those are the contested expansions on the map and usually you don't want to have early fights especially if you see that the name of the player is DICE. Uh, you definitely want to avoid this guy. So, nice decision to go for two middle expansions here uh, and therefore mine a lot of the contested gold and saving his expansions for the later game, which are way more protected in the northeast here. Is he right, Ghost, or would you disagree with anything he said? Uh, I am in no position to disagree here, but yeah, Dice, uh, Dice definitely uh, clearing up the middle here and getting some free expansions here under the nose of Stein. Stein not really yet scouting it yet. I uh, have been questioning Stein's scouting ability recently, but <laughs> um, Dice, yeah, uh, straight away middle expansion first. Very strong position, and I would not like to be in Stein's position here, being next door to uh, Dice, as Dice is usually one to break up keep very quickly and uh, want to smell blood in the water and take you as quick as possible. So uh, I, I feel this potentially may be the game plan for Dice, and we can see Dice actually moving towards Stein's base now. Uh, I think he has scouted it, so it does know that's his stain space here, so... Oh yeah, I totally messed it up by the way, I thought it's Slythe and it's... It's... it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks for not calling me out on that, but yeah, okay, it's you, you, you called yourself out and I realized that, you know, so <laughs> no need for me, but... Yeah, we can see Dice here is also having a little pocket stain, 
So, Stein, unfortunately, on the receiving end of uh, an early beatdown by Stein, uh, uh, Stein, you've got me seeing it now, Dice. <laughs> yeah, and very interesting strategy by Stein. Like, he is definitely not ready for an engagement against Dice, so he's calling out that he is already against Orc. Stein loses as an alchemist. Not joining this. <laughs> Stein, <laughs> actually. And yeah, this is the Shredder dead, and yeah, Orc yeah. is not. Uh, confirming that he is against Stein, so yeah, Dice is just gonna go on Stein. But I honestly don't think that this is what Dice wants here in this game to get into an early freeway on a very big map. Like, this is pretty much exactly the terrain where FFA players, seasoned FFA players shine, like big maps in the uh, early freeways. Like, it always ends up in a lot of hoarding and a lot of balancing. So, I'm not sure if Dice is ready for this situation, but we'll see. But Dice being the unconventional player himself and having a 1v1 background does look to be uh, putting the pressure on Stein here and Stein uh, lo actually lost his uh, alchemist earlier there trying to keep another expansion because of the pressure Dice was putting him under so unfortunately for Stein in a very precarious situation already. Yeah, Dice reminds me of uh, Neutral in his early days a little bit. Super Rambo, immediate rush, even with a Sapper involved. So I think we can say goodbye to Stein. <laughs> Unfortunate position, as many do fear as soon as you see uh, that uh, Dice is next door to you. Yeah, uh, uh, definitely elicits a lot of fear. Yeah, and it's not like the obvious thing, like now it looks a little bit weird or it, it looks standard rather that Dice is going to go for the rush, but in fact, last FML game, he was in the game with Todd, Ashon and Kenny and he was spawning close to Kenny and he did a great job in just toming him pretty much on 50 supply, getting up a lot of expansion and then even interrupting Todd in his fight against uh, Ishan on 50 supply, so very very untypical play for a solo player and i think he's doing similar thing now like he is going harder on stein than he did on kenny last game but again he's not finishing he's not trying to finish stein um but rather now goes back to the creeping back to the hoarding like he's still on 41 supply so he didn't uh, lose any money to upkeep yet can go behind with his macro game yeah, he might still have lost a little bit and didn't gain a lot of experience. Um, but yeah, it's 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 not like he has forced a freeway already. Um, yeah, he can go for his top right side of the map still and get a lot of XP there. So since this is a chat game, everybody should know what the situation is, even though there's not too much scouting going on. Um... Sheik is just busy with creeping, of course, you want the undead hero levels high, also three ba uh, three expansions already. Sheik is playing a conservative, but pretty rich game, I'd say. Very well noticed, two expansions here, uh, sorry, three, securing the fourth, actually. Um, so the whole bottom right hand side belongs to Sheik. Uh, Stein, yeah, very much under leveled here, and the game I actually casted with Stein, he held on to the th to the very end, even though his one v one did not go according to plan. So Stein very well knows how to uh, sneak back into the game under a lot of pressure and under very early harass. So you will see Stein pop up again at one point if he gets a little bit of a breather from Dice, which of course you had rightly pointed out, Dice is now electing to do some creeping. So. Stein now has a little bit of space and can recover a little. Yeah, pretty atypical choice to go Panda first into Demon Hunter. I've never seen this pretty much in that order, but yeah. The combination overall is very solid. Having the Keeper for the late game sounds a little bit weird <laughs> for a 1v1 player, for example, because you always say in 1v1 Keeper is falling off in the late game. But actually, Tranquility is very nice, and also in the hero arena when there is no dispel available anymore, six seconds entangle on heroes is pretty insane. Yeah, I mean, in the one-on-one, -on -one, of course, the unit compositions are a little bit different, and maybe the win condition is a little bit different. Here, um, especially in a late-game matchup versus Sheik, the Thorns aura will definitely shine. Yeah, yeah. Thorns are such a big buff, can't emphasize enough. Um, air, battle, air battle always uh, seem to favor the undead so far, but yeah, after the Thorns buff, definitely the elf is 
considered to be a head in an air, this air fight and Anna is supposed to do a lot of kiting in order to keep up. Sheik and both now, uh, Sheik and, uh, my apology, Dice and both Kobas getting their red camps and so collecting some good items here. Does see a ancient Django being dropped for Dice and down the bottom left Kobas is just about to get his item here. Which unfortunately can't click on. Boss <laughs> plus 12, not too bad for the shadow I guess but prefer the uh, more movement than anything else but it could also yeah, be pretty Kobas good. Up his fourth base, by the way, his fourth expansion, rather. Yeah. So he's the one on the most expansions already, I guess. I'm not mistaken here. I guess you keep the class plus 12 and put it on the Alchemist later with Chemical Rage. Town is under siege. Mm. Uh, we see the gold. So Sheik, of course, having really no contested uh, creeps or people trying to contest him. Well, he's keeping, unlike uh, Dice and uh, Stein here, is sitting with 5k gold. So you see his uh, economy going up, still under well, still at 50 supply, and uh, Stein just only one hero and just got to level 3 alchemist is drastically falling behind in comparison to the rest of the hero levels on this game. And as we so uh, see, the heroes are very important as the game gets on. You rely heavily on the hero level, so Stein looking to be just chilling in his base is compromising as a later game. A yeah, very nice map awareness by Sheik here going across the map in order to find a red spot that hasn't been crept yet as Stein was um, attacked by Dice early so he wasn't able to creep the red camp and now Sheik's getting it and almost four free free heroes. Very nice. The items are a little bit underwhelming. Potion of Restoration and Potion of Divinity. In FFA you don't really like consumables that you can only use for one fight because there are so many fights so you rather have an aura or something um, that's more decisive um, but yeah I, I'm not even sure what's in the item table of potion of restoration and divinity like is there anything good I'm not even quite sure unfortunately uh, so, sorry go, for, go ahead uh, I was about to say, like, if you don't know it, then I don't know it either. We only have one map with that drop table, so I, I can't remember all that. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say that. Unfortunately, staying in no position here, just had to like watch Sheik Zeppelin fly above its expansion, and uh, now Sheik is getting the red camp under yeah, Stein's exactly. nose. <laughs> yeah. <He's fine. laughs> Very unfortunate. So yeah, so far, wow, Kolbas is breaking up keep first. I was not expecting this. Like he's on four expansions and he's known to be a hoarding player. But yeah, he's the one breaking up keep first. She can a very useless item here, Cloak of Flames for the undead, but still has his red camp at the bottom right hand side to get. Uh, there was in the chat earlier that Kolbas was asking Sheik to fight. So that's potentially maybe uh, as idea break up keep and push on to Sheik. Gain some levels experience as the orc needs. Yeah, and Sheik is saying that he pumps, which he's already doing, so that's also not <laughs> not always the case. But yeah, I guess we might see a fight between Kolb and Sheik soon if Kolb is not going on Stein instead, which he is currently doing. Yeah, Stein in a very unfortunate position here is uh, on the receiving end of another beatdown by yet another player on the map who has not dice for this instance, uh, losing both the Shredders and anybody who watches my cast or my games know how much I dislike losing the Shredder and I never really get fortunate to get the Shredder to begin with, so this is uh, very <laughs> close to my heart, losing two, not only one Shredder here, sad. It is one of the coolest units in all of Warcraft and in FFA, of course, one of the most important ones. Poor Stein, man, what did he do? I mean, judging from the Discord, probably a lot, but does he really deserve... Uh, this this behavior from the two players. Interesting. So Corp says he's waiting for Sheik. So <laughs> yeah, that's also yeah. a way to wait. So yeah, Stein, uh, Stein now trying to get his uh, main back again, but Kobas putting the pressure and he's getting no breath whatsoever or no space to breathe, shall I say? Uh, so very weird unfortunate position for Stein not only to be pwned by one person but two and only now getting a second hero which he goes for Panda uh, so yeah very late timing for the second hero very underwhelming levels uh, and really the recovery looks a very steep hill to climb one may say yeah 
So yeah, so it, it looks like Vice is the only one hoarding at the moment. So yeah, I told you he's definitely already in the FFA mentality. Um, and yeah, but no one else is calling him out. So ne neither Sheik nor Colt nor Stein is calling him out on 50. And they rather want to fight him. But I think I can understand it from Sheik's perspective because in this early engagement, this is a good chance to get hero levels. And most of the time, I, th I even think that having like three kick gold more is not compensating for having three hero levels more. Like I would rather uh, take this early fight as Sheik does. Like he is still on ten kick gold, so he had a great macro game. And yeah, now even with illusions, uh, seems like a favorable fight here against Kolb. And Kolb, I guess, thinking that Sheik is in one hundred. Uh, or why he's he's saying wait? Is he going to high upkeep? Lost SP. What's SP? So Koba selecting to say it's 79 is not producing more yet. Is uh, starting a fight now. So we see the fight between Sheik and Koba here. Bats moving a little bit. Sheik doing great with his micro. Oh, and the illusions eat yeah. four bets, I think. So the bets didn't take out a single. Um, first one. The ledge does fall for Sheik a little bit under. Wet on the Oh wow, I didn't even see that. Well, a little bit of a blunder on both sides, I guess, but now we focus the destroyer, so there's no dispel anymore. The heal wave is going wild. <laughs> Nuke on the witch doctor, also rare to see. What a wild fight this is. Nobody really flawless. Sheik down to 67, but still should be winning this fight if he keeps maybe one worm alive. But Coil was thrown, and that's the kill. Oh, Lots really of nice experience. Coil was, given that he wasted pretty much four bets into illusions. Like, this is a very nice synergy, keep in mind. The acid bomb plus the bets. Yeah, very well pointed out here. The, uh, the acid bomb jumped drastically to just an armor of the... Uh, the worms and destroyers makes the bats more effective. However, the waste in bats into illusions, amazing uh, idea from Sheik here. Jebating the uh, illusions for the bats from Cole Bass did succeed in doing so. So a lot of uh, a lot of wasted bats in that fight there. But yeah, both are uh, leaving the fight with a little bit of losses, especially that lich kill, but not too much. Yeah, I think uh, since everybody is grinding to the high levels, uh, this will repeat. And Ghost, you're getting the first comment in the chat saying, this cast just got five times better with this guy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I am very nervous and under a lot of pressure to try and perform to the highest degrees. Have only been doing this for a short while, so uh, feeling feeling definitely the sweat coming down the forehead. Um, so trying to stay composed and trying to actually cast to the best of my abilities, but unfortunately... I uh, feel like I'm casting terrible, but I uh, appreciate the, the comment, so thank you very much for that. Dude, you are doing fine. Don't you worry. We were all nervous at the beginning, uh, and sometimes still are. So, we still get a lot of gold on Dice's side. We still got a lot of gold on Sheik's side. Um, and Stein, is he even still in the race for the rest of this game? So, Stein, I think, has just given up with the idea of... Uh, you know, a base that's easily hit, so he's hiding behind the tree line at the top left, uh, trying to, I guess, as I said in my introduction, trying to find the perfect timing to strike, but I, I don't think that is going to come to fresh, and given the zero levels and given how passive he's playing, how far he's fell behind, uh, looks like essentially he's a sitting duck in the water waiting to be uh, shot, so uh, unfortunate for Stein in this position being toned by not only one, but as I said, two players. Yeah, it feels like he's already in his comfort zone. Look at this. He has four Zeppelins already, so he's yeah. ready for the race race, that's for sure. Yep. Prepare he just for that late game. The early, mid, and late game. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's waiting for the pace race. So, yeah. See you in one hour, I guess, Stein. He, uh, he's surprisingly snuck an expansion at the right hand side here, uh, in between all of Dicey's expansions. So. Interesting wow, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Interesting the uh, movement from Stein. Yeah, it's pretty respectable, actually, that he's getting one, two, three, four bases for having a level three and a one hero. Level one hero. Uh, he would not be able to contest anything, and everyone lets him mine on 50 at the moment, it seems. So, yeah, nice recovery from Stein already on 5k gold, and if no one is going on him, that gold count will rise within the next 
minutes of this game, hours of this game. <laughs> we'll see. Shika, lucrative here in the 19k, able to buy some items here. Uh, really looking to be pretty strong early expansion, staying under 50. And as I said again in the introduction, uh, Sheik's really adapting to this game mode. And yeah, I usually make this mistake of having one fight and immediately pumping back up to 80 or so, or maybe even 100 to try and win the next fight. But Sheik realizing he can sit back, go back to 50, collect a little bit more gold, rinse and repeat, and uh, yeah, gain some hero levels. And unfortunately, here again, Stein is getting picked on by uh, Dice up at the top right hand corner. Uh, they scouted the expansion. So it's Dane once again uh, in a position of unfortunate. Uh, uh, unfortunate. Yeah, he can't catch a breath, man. Uh, except that one from the panda, of course. <laughs> but all right, maybe they will leave him alone for the time being. And I'm curious that nobody really attacked Dice yet. He's just sitting there and he's hoarding and the levels aren't looking too bad either. Yeah, very interesting. I have to agree. Like, Sheik knows that Dice is 50, I guess. I'm, I mean, I'm yeah, 100% sure at this point. Uh, but yeah, he's 52, so yeah, not really anything to call out except the two middle expansions, which are now getting called out. But as they were taken so early, they are already mined well down to 2k on the top left. Uh, so yeah, Dice might end up with plus one expansion which is on 50 like plus 12k gold so yeah that's also very nice for mr dice obas uh, offering peace to sheik drop the night on there at sheik's expansion and uh, rather than saying it in the chat sheik just uh, acknowledges it by saying yeah uh, one moment If you yeah, got a highlight, that was me. Highlight? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I was just mentioning you in chat uh, because uh, my people were asking where to find your cast, so I had to, to highlight you a little bit there so people can follow you and should follow you. Um, pretty calm game for the start of the week for now. Are we in for like a three-hour session here today? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I hope this was... I was expecting Dynamite, of course, two titans of the uh, 1v1 scene meeting head-to-head. -head. So I did think Sheik and Dice were going to just essentially dominate their uh, position. But of course, Kobas having so much experience and uh, knowing when to pump, knowing when to sit back. Yeah, it seems a little bit passive just now. Looking like potentially the game may uh, mine out the gold mines before really all the action occurs. And that will still and take yeah, him. Right, like he's on minus one expansion compared to Dice and Kolb, and that's very expensive in the long run. Uh, but yeah, this game is definitely going to go the route of people are having gaining huge banks, and then we see some huge fights and I guess some high-level fights, especially Dice and Sheik. I can't wait to see them fighting and let's hope this is going to happen. Yeah, I'm also excited for Dice and Sheik. This is one of the uh, motivating factors to seeing big names like this actually join the FFA community and uh, show, you know, pave the way for us undeads or night elves or whatever like this, whatever race you play. Uh, I'm sure you will have some person you watch in the FFA scene that inspires you. And of course, Sheep being one of my inspirations, super excited about seeing how he, uh, how he works in this match. And again, Stein losing yet another source of income here just never getting the break. Uh, Sheik this time deciding to cancel the expansion of uh, Stein. Yeah, that's also a little bit of experience as you want to get to 555 as an undead especially. Uh, and we do have a little bit of a fight in the middle of the map where Dice is getting called by Kolbas now onto the Keeper of the Grove. There's an invo potion. Stomp was decent. Should be or could be a TP, but actually Dice turns it around with, as you mentioned, his amazing one-on-one -on -one, uh, capabilities. Is yeah, should be able to to get the Demon Hunter out Ooh, and absolutely is. Target like the uh, Keeper actually had the stuff. And Demon Hunter trying to staff in on an archer. The archer dies before the Demon Hunter staffed in. So Dice now two ver two versus three heroes here. Alchemist in Rages here runs after the Keeper. Keeper running a bit low here. Uh, doesn't actually have anything apart from, of course, a big anvil here. Yeah, probably reluctant to use it. No mana on the Shadow Hunter anymore. And the Keeper has still has an entangle left. So yeah, there's going to be a forced TP, I guess, on Cold. Yep. 
Nice reaction, just in time, and this dev already ready again. Obas, as we've seen just before he TP'd out, has now got a massive army of wives. And Dice looking to have such a massive base here, loads of Ancient Winds, easily pump to defend this if need be. Very lucrative as well, 23k in the map, but nothing in comparison to uh, Dice here, uh, sorry, Sheik here sitting 32k. Yeah, kind of cool that Sheik was complaining that he has one mine less than everyone else, but still he's by far the richest in the game. So that little mana plus the base on the upper left uh, is working out. Yeah, and it totally makes sense. And I actually don't really know why Sheik actually is as rich as he really actually is. Maybe because DICE has such a big main base and invested so much money into it. Um, but yeah, Sheik is doing really well in the macro department. Only once broke into upkeep and immediately went back to 50. I'm not even sure if he stopped mining when he was 80, most likely not. Um, but yeah, looking very good here. And DICE holding the entire game only at 25k, even though he has plus one mine on Sheik. So I'm not sure how Sheik did it. But Stein is now going with two shredders on the uh, top left expansion of Sheik. And yeah, now he's gonna lose the bottom. <laughs> yeah, Stein, Sheik, uh, obviously not really want to give Stein any peace. Uh, I guess maybe the uh, Discord trolling is now biting him back in the butt, per se, uh, because, you know, each player has had a piece of him and uh, the chat is only making it more interesting. Yeah, as you guys said, he can't catch a break, but it uh, seems to be clear that Kolbas is on DICE now with this army. He, he's the one at 80. DICE is now following, so Kolbas has to be the aggressor, and uh, DICE is definitely ready yeah, for that. Yeah, and DICE in one round of production goes from 50 to 80. So very nice here on the macro departure, as we said. Like, he has a very good main base, very big main base. And now TP's in. It's gonna be a tough fight for Kolb, honestly. Kolbash just TP's out. Yeah, I think that's the best play here. And yeah, Dice was forced to break into upkeep the first time in this game, which is also nice for everyone. But Sheik, yeah, on 37k, still not uh, pumping into, high upkeep, into upkeep and yet gaining some experience as he is trying to tone Stein here a little bit on 50, who is 50 himself, but of course with way lower hero levels. Yeah, staying uh, essentially a target on the head for many other people, I guess. Uh, Sheik now having to safeguard the expansion here that he probably doesn't really need given that he's uh, 12k above the second richest person on the map. But every time he moves away from the expansion, Stein pokes a little bit, making Sheik come back and uh, punish Stein. So. We're trying to create some alliances, but here comes the revenge by Dice. Two fights were had. And let's see how Kolbas can do in this one-on-one -on -one with Hippos now, with Mountain Giants in the mix. Yeah, he is way too heavy in the Wind Riders. Like, this is not gonna work out against uh, Hippos plus level 5 Panda, I think. Yeah, not without bats at the very least. Everything's burning, hmm. everything's missing. Here comes the bats. Oh, oh the oh, bat. Nice. Good timing for the bat. <laughs> bat, yeah. Obas also doing a good job here and counting the, uh, the Hippogriffs back, but unfortunately loses his uh, TC. Yeah, but Dice loses all of his Hippogriffs here in the back in the meantime, so it's it's a fine trade, I guess, but now also losing the expansion is, of course, not the best. But yeah, still 23k gold. Only lost the TC, 72 supply versus 65 on Dice, so actually a nice fight here from Kolb once again. Yeah, I think his chat is also pretty good. Like he says, he's losing my TC, I'm losing my expo. Uh, Sheik was watching, but um, Stein doesn't really know, but Stein, not a real factor there. So curious if uh, Sheik is getting like manip by that, but I kind of doubt it. Man, it always comes as a surprise in these matches to see so much gold. Like I was watching Bobby the other day there and he was climbing upwards to 44k, I think it was, in the gold count. And I thought that was incredible, but Sheik now up at 40 <laughs> and still under 50 supply is mad. 
Yeah, he has no real enemy. He has no real reason to fight with 544. I think the levels are fine for the for the late game. And yeah, Dice. he can just ward. Yeah, Dice doing a great job here. And Kitan bats are moving forward, but eating breath of fire. There's a couple of land on the chimeras, but probably will be staffed out anyway. So a wasted couple of uh, bats for nothing there from uh, Kobas. Alchemist is obviously trying to get level 6, then everything gets super juicy, especially these Chimeras. So a few more trades, and then he has achieved his goal. Right, I saw the Alchemist uh, having to transmute super strong ability in the late game, of course. Being able to uh, sustain, staying alive for a lot longer, especially when the goal becomes very dif difficult to uh, get your hands on. Yeah, so I think it makes sense to go for some expensive trades because it will pay off dividends if he gets transmuted oh, early. Ready. And there we go. But we won't see transmute quite yet. He doesn't have a mana here, unfortunately. Wow, some really, really, really good fights by Kolp here again. Dice on 56 versus Kolp on 61. And yeah, now level 6 Alchemist. So one Chimera every fight might just disappear. Yeah, I'm not sure if you want to continue fighting now against uh, against Kolb. Yeah, good point, good point. Like, it wasn't as easy ex as expected, I guess, for Dice, because he doesn't know Kolb too well, I think. And now there are some towers, so not too much to gain here. Only one Chimera, so... Ah, he wants Alta out, but they're not even dead. It's gonna be accomplished. And nice mana potion and first sell on the Chimera. Juicy, juicy. Kaching making some bank. Now the mana burn wasn't even enough against the mana potion, of course. Still a good trade for Kolbas. And Dice uh, must have thought that this is going to be easier. Yeah, definitely. Like he is losing the fights here at the moment. Or at least trades only even. And also here level wise, this is looking very good for Corp already. Like level 6 TZ is super important, level 5 Shadowhunter is super important. So these will be the, those will be the next two important hero levels. And yeah, also for Sheik, slowly but surely he should try to get some XP. They now scouted that he's on 50, Corp even pointing it out. Uh, okay. <laughs> Dice thinks that he... Yeah. Well, if if it proves anything, Dice does know how to use the uh, chat mechanism of the game, so he did say lying. Uh, so, you know, as Neil said uh, before, potentially maybe able to type GG at one point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, I don't think so, dude. I'm, uh, I think I've casted around a thousand games of Dice and maybe three GGs were in there. Uh, this kid never learns. <laughs> Very young. Uh, probably easily tilted as well. Um, but yeah, uh, Dice, uh, sorry, Sheik was trying to sneak a expansion under Kobas's eyes there when Kobas was fighting with uh, Dice, but of course Kobas noticed this and denied it straight away. So the riches only get richer on this map, or tried to at least, but denied one expansion. Just like and in she... real life. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, she can actually count off some accolades here, yeah, uh, and an anticipation of pumping up. So moving up to 49 supply, introducing uh, a further five gargs. There we go. He mined out a lot. One, two, three gold mines are gone already. One is still up, but only 420. So seems like a good time to pump up and do some damage. He also uh, has taken advantage of the Undead's Unsummon ability, so you can see where our original expansion sat with loads of towers, he unsummons them and uh, gets all of, his, all of his gold back. So, yeah, taking advantage of that mechanicism of the uh, Undead's abilities here. And again, Sheik, five Gargs on the, play, uh, the playing field with another five coming and two Worms. There's going to be a strong army, of course. And who does he want to fight then? I'm not too sure. Probably dies early on. All right, 75 now against 80. Ooh, but the bats will not find their target. So yeah, he has to engage with the rest of the army. So not lost a single bat. One bat is falling now. 
and already I heard a transmute, so Pets will now connect with the Hippogriffs very nicely, so another favorable trade I would call it. And the Keeper already in trouble, Acid Bomb level 3, of course, huge damage, armor reduction, but now three additional Chimeras join the fight when there are no more bets. So this is the point where um, Corp definitely has to return and wow, he is losing three casters here to a big breath. And now also the air is falling, so yeah. Dice looks like he is coming ahead, but he is still 60 versus 66, so again a very nice fight here by Corp, who is also muckering up in the back. Shadowhunter now has to be careful, but has an invo left. Bat coming in, so this Chimera is gonna go down as well. So another nice XP boost. Level 5 Shadow Hunter already, level 4 TC, but also on the other side, level 6 Panda, level 5 Demon Hunter. But the Keeper has had to be stuffed out a lot of the time, so only level 3. Yeah, Kobas trading really well here. Seeing his uh, hero level was going up quicker than dice. And uh, did actually TP on Shadow and TC at the same time. So back into the uh, safety of his towers and his base. Publicly offering peace to dice. So. Let's see if he accepts it. I guess he wanted his level 5 Shadow Hunter. That's what he got. But he's exposed to a level 6 Panda now. Wonder if the Demon Hunter is bringing some mana potion. Nope. Not sharing his drinks. So egocentric. <laughs> And, uh, you know, still holding hopes for Stein, because we must uh, still notice he's still on the map. Uh, building a little base still, uh, hiding in the sanctuary, wherever he is, actually. Uh, but still on the map somewhere, so maybe a big comeback at one point. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> Dude, I don't want to be in the shoes of the panda on, and the potom in the late game fights. Uh, this will be quite problematic to keep them alive. Wow, yep. and this is such a high-level player. Sorry to interrupt from DICE. Like, yeah, okay, but Kolb is, is calling it. <laughs> so DICE acts as if he was not happy to peace Kolb, because if he pieces Kolb, then he knows the Cheek might be going on him with 100. So like this, if he acts like they will continue to fight, Cheek is not really allowed, in quotes, to go on DICE now. And DICE is 1, 2, 3, and his main base. Look at this main base, 6.8k gold still, where Cheek already mined it out. So he saved a lot in that main base that now comes in handy to mine on 50. Yeah, a lot of uh, experienced FFA players elect to abandon mining at their main as quick as possible and in order to save that for a rainy day. But usually, correct me if I'm wrong, usually if it's scouted near the late game, that usually lets it a team, uh, a teaming of you because you, you've kept the gold there and that is gold on the map that is not yeah, anywhere else. Yeah, exactly right, and that's a big disadvantage of, of doing that, but we are still in the mid game, so at the moment it's not going to get punished, and he is really trying to mine 100% of his main gold on 50, which is really smart on a map like this, and especially, yeah, I, I always have a hard time to believe that DICE is, is this smart in terms of a sense, like no solo player would do this without coaching. <laughs> yeah, but I, I do believe Neutron did coach him though. Uh, unless it's Neutron taking Dice account and playing for him right now, but... <laughs> no, no, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> nah, nah, of course not, but yeah, Dice playing very smart, very uh, clever, staying in low upkeep and uh, yeah, mining the rest of his mine. So is going to catch up with Sheik's 38k and will be in a good position too. Especially with the hero levels now being higher than anyone else on the map. Uh, apart from Kobas, who has 4 TC, but much stronger than uh, Sheik's levels at the moment. Yeah, Sheik would love to trade. He's losing a bit... Oh, no, he did. he's not losing gold. He can stay at 100 until the end of time, because he's not mining anymore. Um, I don't know how good their scouting is, if they know that there's, like, 14,000 14, gold in DICE's mines. They should figure this out rather quickly. Yeah, Dice, if he's left to uh, stay at 50 food for much longer, then he will become the richest on the map. And also has uh, pretty strong hero levels now too. So will be uh, in a good position as time goes on. And Sheik essentially at 100, I guess, picking his, uh, his fight through chat, finding out who to, uh, who to go on. Yeah, I think Sheik should move. Like, he's underestimating, I think, the amount of bases that dice is currently still mining on 50 like he could punish this very easily 
already being on 100. Uh, instead of this, he's going for this men not balancing way of asking people to fight. I mean, he pretty much knows that no one is on 100 anyway, and in fact, everyone is on 50. Oh, poor Stein. He's <laughs> calling him out in the chat. Yeah, maybe not too familiar with his playstyle yet, that this is uh, a rather normal game for Stein. I've actually seen Stein in way worse uh, positions. And still being somewhat of a threat in the late game, so never underestimate him. Yeah. <laughs> My fingers are still crossed and hopes this time makes a big comeback here and makes it interesting, but uh, with such low hero levels, uh, doesn't really have you know much ability if it comes to the hero arena to really make any um, threat. And of course, essentially being this passive, I don't know, realize you may agree, but Shriek being a little bit too passive, you're not really picking a fight to go with. Uh, may actually fall behind in hero levels if Dice and Collab continue. Yeah, like he's not accomplishing anything with uh, that 100 supply that he has. He's the only one that is not mining, and he allows, on the other hand, to uh, everyone else to mine on 50 here. And finally, it looks like that he's gonna try and punish it, maybe go on Kolb here. Of course, it's scary to see in level, uh, level 6 Alchemist uh, if you have Frost Worms. But still, there's so much XP here on the ground for him by killing these 50 supply casters. Uh, but he's very patient, cautious. I, I think it's a little bit overly cautious. Like, especially if you have 38k gold, you can risk to lose your army. Uh, and yeah, as we said, especially if you're the one or the only one who's not mining and everyone else is mining on 50 pretty much. Yeah, Sheik now uh, back up uh, Stein a little bit. I uh, wonder if Sheik was going to attack Stein again for some additional levels, but chooses not to yet. So Stein giving a little bit of a break so far. Yeah, finally some sympathy for the guy. Oh, there I yeah. say it, and here's the attack. Okay, I cursed him. Sorry, Stein, that wasn't my intention. Uh, of course, if there's still some gold on the map, you want to grab it. And uh, this is just a few Hippo Riders. Against Transmute, no bats here though, and this Colbus yeah, army no is super weak. Really, and you should know that Stein is pretty much playing exclusively Hippo Riders every game. Yep, Sheik turning away there, I was, uh, never mind. Uh, again, I just cursed, cursed him as well, I see Sheik turning away, but no, Sheik just finding a different entrance point for uh, Stein's base. And now poking at him as well on the right hand side when Colbus backs away, so yes. <laughs> Feeling bad for staying, man. Yeah, damn bullies here in this game. We should, uh, I don't know, give them a penalty or something. But maybe they'll <laughs> get their lesson later on in the game. While this is still a bit uh, peaceful and calm, we got a few supporters here. Thank you, Copilot, for 25 months. Woody Wood for 1,000 bits. W3 History for the raid. Buttcrumbs with the five gifted subs. Please. And 100 bits saying, loving this ghost dude. So another little fight between Kobas and Stein here happening at the uh, shop on the left hand side. Uh, Kobas really just fighting with three heroes and one shaman moving his walkers back. Uh, Stein showing the weakness in his heroes here, not really able to make much of an impact to uh, Kobas's P1 army. But yeah, trying to pick up something to get some levels to catch up somewhere. Uh, but unfortunately... Yeah, he has another 1.5 now, so it's already progress. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, good clear progress here from uh, Stein, but as walking into an orc base here. Slowly but steady making the progress towards level 2, it's not that easy. Uh, I n never leveled up in my life, so I can't make fun of him, but Sheik seems to be having a grand time. First, he's making fun of Dice that Kolbas owned him, and now he's making fun of Kolbas that uh, Stein owned him, so Sheik having a good time. Yeah, yeah Sheik's movement is so inefficient though, like he is attacking Stein, but is he really, he's taking out like what, two Ancient of Winds or something? Now he might finally be able to get something, but Dice is already there to catch the XP. But yeah, of course Dice should be able to contest Sheik here with 50. And it's pretty much only a race for the XP that is Stein. Yep, Stainforce actually abandoned ship. Uh, the TPs 
Losing his uh, Popman away, but does TP into the bottom right. Uh, the old undead expansion, not in the bottom right, but mid right, uh, in order to at least save his heroes a little bit. So, unfortunately, Sheik's been a little bit of blood in the water, probably, again, collecting some experience from the trees. Uh, and Kolbas joins the party here and back on to Stein's expansion, which only has 80 gold, 70 gold now, anyway, so not too much, but. Stein did manage to somehow mine up to 8,000 gold, so there's, there's still some form of hopes for him. Yeah, I mean, at the moment it looks like everyone wants him out, as it's pretty much all three attacking him. Now Dice is moving back, but the other two not really interested. Maybe Alchemist is going to try to get in Transmute, but this might also turn the aggression on him. And therefore he is rather not gonna do it as he has still plenty of gold. And speaking of, about plenty of gold, it's now dice and lead with a grand total of most likely up to 40k. Okay, he's now pushing into upkeep. And yeah, I guess he's preparing to fight Sheik here. Yeah, I think uh, they scouted Sheik's army and is now, of course, preparing for some additional XP for himself. Now, this gives uh, Sheik a little bit of an opportunity to collect some levels himself if him and Dice fight. But yeah, Sheik uh, letting Dice mine a little bit too long in 50 now has seen himself be the second richest on the map, so tables have turned a little bit. Yeah, that seems to be the case. I wonder... Uh, if they know how rich the other players are right now. I mean, Dice was fighting Kolbas and vice versa, but Sheik, does he have an eye for the gold mine of Dice? Mm, good question, yeah. But I think in a game like this, uh, you pretty much estimate the gold count of the other players similar to your own. So it's never going to be too far off if you do with that, if you go with that. So this is always a safe bet. So Sheik left the remainders of Stein's base up the top left and said to Kolbas that he could use Pillage with a Raider for additional gold, but of course Kolbas throws a receipt on the table and says, no thank you, I'm not paying, it for, paying for it today, and just decides to uh, take the base away with Bats and the army he has now. So lo losing out on some gold there that he could have got with a Raider. Yeah, so Sheik agreed to a fight with Dice, but Dice is on 80, whereas Sheik is on 100, so it's not going to be favorable here for Dice. He rather has to realize quickly that Sheik is the one on 100 here and pump into her upkeep himself. Let's see if this is going to happen. Let's take a look at the Keeper Thorns or a level 1. That's a big... Uh, I'm not sure if I can call it a mistake, as he was fighting the Orc before, but against Undead... Thorns or level 2 is already a, a big difference, and yeah, Sheik is doing what Anna should do. Deal damage prior to the fight with some Nova Swarm. And yeah, Dice is realizing that Sheik is on 100, on 100 and therefore delaying the fight to the point where he is on 100 himself, and now really heavy on Hippogriffs, full commitment to Hippogriffs. And let's see how this fight is going to go. I'm already pretty excited. He's actually uh, making an additional three Ancients of Wind, of course, preparing for the Undead's uh, air army. So he can pump, I think, seven of them, six hippos at the same time. Yeah, eight Ancient of Winds will be overall. Eight. And in the meantime, Colt may be hunting down Stein. I'm not sure, but definitely... Placing a lot of wards, so it's going to be tough to hide, and he will have very nice vision of the entire map. Yeah, pardon me again, the yeah, eight ancient winds. I miscalculated, and of course, my eyes deceive me. I only seen six, so every tree looks similar to me. I don't play an elf. <laughs> <laughs> and here we see an engagement between uh, Dice and Sheik. Oh yeah, Ooh, even with Crow of the Beast, keep in mind there's no marketplace, so this is a one-time use. And yeah, wow, very messy fight as always. A lot of XP will be split towards these two players. I have no idea how to cast this fight other than look at the supply, which is favoring Dice. Very nice. Yeah, Sheep down to 54 supply, Dice now at 72, forcing Sheep to TP away. Having learned uh, from the 
you know, the OGs of the scene casting Neo here, looking in the right-hand corner here, you can see the, the supply dropping very quickly for Sheik and the supply for uh, Dice was not dropping so quickly. Yeah, man, these fights with mass air, that's just a nightmare to cast. Uh, usually I, I I hand it over to Remo so he can do that. Now I do the same to you. I'm just mean, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, looking good so far. It was also a little bit unfortunate for Sheik. He used a big consumable there at the end and then the fight was over. So he couldn't really uh, use the spells for that. So yeah, a little slap in the face for Sheik this fight. Yeah, very unfortunate. I mean, unfortunate is the wrong word, but not really motivating for the upcoming fights because he used the big value plus 25% screw of the beast uh, to uh, engage into this fight. But I guess he was a little bit too heavy on frost worms. Like, if uh, Dice is going full hippogriffs, then Sheik should go full gargoyles on his end. And also, I think it was a mistake to not sleep the panda enough and not kite enough like i think he could get one more nova or one more swarm out if he kited correctly uh, but yeah straight up fights don't favor the undead yeah, yeah i agree there uh, running head first into keeper of thorns or uh, even though it's just level one the now it still impacts quite a lot and uh, of course drunken haze and breath of fire makes a lot of the gargoyles miss so maybe would have been better to uh weaken the army a little bit more before engaging Unfortunately, yeah, it's staying under. Yeah. And he is getting to the choosy level 5. Um, uh, Torrent uh, Chieftain and close to level 6 Shadow Hunter. So, very nice and easy XP here for Kolbas, while at the same time getting a lot of map vision, as already mentioned. And the question now going to be is Dice going for round 2 against Cheek, or what is going to be the next? Round of fights. Yep, Kobas uh, still in the chat saying that um, Stein was go going on Kobas, <laughs> but actually Kobas was trying to pick off Stein's hero when the hero was just floating around the map. So pretty funny uh, looking at chat, but looking at reality. Yeah, that was uh, indeed quite funny. Like, yeah. what was that supposed to accomplish, really? Um, yeah. Maybe getting a laugh of, of the other players. Yeah, a level four alchemist, so so scary just now, especially against Colab seven five five and some army kicking about. Very intimidating, I guess, for uh, Colab to see a level four alchemist. And yeah, Corbis rise. He overproduced vibes here against the air army of Dice. Now also he has six supply here idling in the back. I hope he will take care of that. Uh, he already killed a lot of pets over one hundred supply production, which is very nice as they get already macroed for you in the back. Uh, so yeah, he's missing six supply here, which can be huge, but now big fight. Starting off with the transmit, of course, and a very choosy asset bomb. The hippos were super stacked, so a lot of them now very low, and the Viva now plus the bats. Perfect fight for Cold, look at this, 65 versus 95. Amazing, again. What the hell, dude? Like, Culp is so good in these fights versus Snide Elf. It's unbelievable. All the Chimera's <laughs> gone. Big Bad Voodoo was doing a lot. Demon Hunter now under fire, but splitting the attention to the Keeper, who's out. We even got a Panda oh ultimate in the God. mix. Invo Potion by Dice. Nicely done. The talents <laughs> are getting picked apart, and Ooh. Dice is just in the dirt. What the hell just happened? What? Yeah, he lost everything and... Cope on the comfy 95 supply after the fight, out of 95. Yeah, I was having to uh, rub my eyes here. I could not believe what I was seeing. Kobas, of course, been, I think, a little bit underestimated by Dice here. And Dice essentially losing the majority of his army, if not all, having to TP away uh, and lick his wounds. And Kobas standing there with most of his army left over. Incredible uh, from Kobas here. Good job. Yeah, that and, uh, really helps. Keep in mind, Kolbas reported before the game that he would like to get subbed because he has 38 degrees fever. And he's playing hot. Yeah. He's playing super hard. Wow. Pardon the pun, pardon the pun. Yeah, I was just about to say that as well. That bear in the mind that just before on Discord, yeah, he announced that he was feeling a bit ill and had a fever. So. So he's playing yeah, out of a mind. Maybe he needs to play more often with a fever. Or if this is him with a fever, then I can't imagine him without. Pretty scary indeed.
Yeah, so the alchemist choice paid off heavily here. So it looks like with the acid bomb plus bets, you can go really heavy on the Vi one because there is no real counter left anymore after this combination hits. Yeah, I was very curious about not actually using blade because for myself, seeing blade in the map, I instantly just think, yep, that's over. <laughs> I may as well go next. But uh, seeing the alchemist, I generally think, oh, okay, cool alchemist. But you underestimate the acid bomb is so strong. So yeah, Colbass, of course, picking a good hero, and especially for late game as well. Um, and yeah, interesting to see how effective that was in such a big fight against Dice. Yeah, very good points by you two. Like, you know, as if you're facing Night Elf and Undead, they will go to the mass air with Garks and Worms and uh, Chimeras and Hippos. And then you have bats against that. But in the late game, when there's high armor upgrades, etc., they don't do too much anymore. But if you just negate the armor upgrades with Acid Bomb, then you're back to, to, uh, to square one. And the bats are doing a lot again. Very uh, clever indeed. We actually seen the 1v1 scene usually happy goes the alchemist last against an orc with a uh, mass air. So very strong indeed against uh, air with the acid bomb, diminishing the uh, armor, as you said, making the buffs go, the, the armor upgrades go back to a standard almost baseline or even lower than baseline. So making the bats much more effective per bat uh, detonate. Okay, so now everybody seems to respect the other. Uh, Shake got uh, slapped by Dice, and Dice got slapped by Colbus. What's the next move? Yeah, maybe take out Stein for good. <laughs> oh, I, I, well, I was thinking the same, but I didn't really want to say it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Stein somehow is managing to get some T2 upgrades here on the tree at the right-hand side at the... Uh, bottom right not the full bottom right but mid right so it's trying to make some form of recovery uh but yeah not really being left and of course using chat to his full uh full degree and maybe not really saying the right things here to convince Kobas not to attack him <laughs> yeah we see stein is uh taking to tier two again so i think his plan now is to get up like eight hidden hippo archers and then try to survive until the very end game but yeah his chances are very slim with the hero spot he, that he got he might not even be able to get alchemist level six like i can't really realistically see how this would work and yeah without that, it's gonna be hard to find a win condition for him and on the other hand Kolb really is a surprising factor of the game like it's Pretty much the same with Kolb as it was with Peanut before. Like I always thought they are more like the hoarding guys, crying a lot if they get attacked, but both has, have proven to be very strong in their straight up fights. And we saw that today fighting against Dice without losing pretty much any supply 100 versus 100. What the hell? Yeah, very. I, I of course, uh, have known that he has got good FFA uh, background, but. Slightly underestimated them against Dice and Sheik, and of course Sheik and Dice having such, you know, very they're very well known in the community. Uh, so yeah, it's super surprising for me. Good to see Kobas stand his ground and actually uh, giving a little bit of a beat down to Dice there in that fight. So pretty, uh, pretty good to see. Yeah, I don't envy him if uh, Sheik and Dice decide to team up on him maybe later because of the Alchemist. But until then, he's doing damn fine. Some exclamation marks on the battlefield and some new fans for him, for sure. Is there going to be a next fight? Dice and Kolbas uh, kind of moving closer to each other. Yeah, but it's a similar army for Dice here as it was in the last fight, and it looks now, even on paper, I think way better for Kolbas if he can control the bats well. Like, there are some bats, I think, not in the control group as they are um, following the Alchemist, but now he should see that Dice is close, and he's asking mentally for a fight, and if Dice is gonna say yes, or even if not, I guess we will see in the next engagement pretty soon. And let's see if it was just luck or if he's, if he can repeat the first fight. All right, so Dice is splitting up one group of hippo riders so that the acid bomb is not reaching. And yeah, now way better here for Dice to with the uh, cyclone. So no acid bomb, no transmute yet. And yes, yeah, suddenly this fight looks way different. 
Yep, dice heavily uh, reliant on his micro skills and adaptability from 1v1. Notices his mistake in the first engagement, split the uh, hippos off to the right hand side and brought them in after Acid Bomb had been or attempted to be placed onto the hippos and used Cyclone here to keep the Acid Bomb at bay. Did grant a level 6 uh, Superman here, so pretty scary. And dice climbing back up in hero levels here and uh, fight totally utterly different. Dice now at 74 supply and Colab now in the receiving end of being at 52 supply, so. Yeah, the fight did not work out very well for Colab on this occasion. Dice, adaptability, versatility, very great in this fight, has uh, seen himself prevail. And yeah, there was no kryptonite at all at Colbus. Amira's presence. Whoops, this was staff. You know, Night Elves always have their staffs. And even <laughs> staff against the acid bomb. It's all good. Yeah, no sweat. Three staffs. Ideal. Two staffs. <laughs> Uh, probably can't help uh, these mountain giant anymore. And Sheik doesn't seem yeah, to believe him. I think the game changer him. here were the two talents that prevented the acid bomb and the sale of a chimera. So small things that decide fight by a big margin. Mountain giant was actually saved there, but will eat a lot of minges. Uh, Dice not even sacrificing one mountain giant for the greater good. And now Colab taking the fight into Dice's base does detonate onto the Hippogriffs and loses all of his Hippogriffs there, so trying to even the plain field Colab is trying. Yeah, that's the nice thing for Orc here. Like, if Orc is very heavy on gold, then they can trade uh, the bats for Hippogriffs, for Chimeras, and Gained huge levels like we see now, seven, almost eight, and seven, six on the remaining two heroes. Yeah, Dice and Cola burn a little bit through their bank. It's a lot of bank left over though, and Sheik uh, just wandering around the map at this moment, and uh, Stein again going unnoticed, hiding. Yeah, Sheik noticed that he was there. He was flying over the altar and Moonwell, but doesn't seem to be very interested in kicking him out. A little bit of a sympathy, I think. <laughs> For the first time in like an hour, Stein receives some <laughs> sympathy. Yeah, you know, maybe Sheik's feeling good. You never know. Maybe maybe the coffee's kicked in. Maybe he's had a, a bit of chocolate. And he's just seen Stein and thought, yeah, I can leave him for another day. Either that or just saving him like a little a mini XP tome at one point. Who knows? We'll find out. Yeah, and Sheik was pointing it out. I even missed that, that the panda's holding the Scorch Bone Chimes. So very nice find on a map that doesn't have a lap. Wow. Yeah, Scorch Bone Chimes. Uh, yeah, doesn't have a, a map. Yeah, yeah, the Scourge Bone Chimes and the Thorns Order is going to be such a pain to deal with uh, for Sheik with Mask Arx when he transitions to that to fight the Night Elf. So now adding two fairies into the mix, or one fairy, okay. <laughs> that is, is in the production tab. Uh, but still, yeah, heavily on air. Uh, actually, kind of nice. For dice that um, the orc is going for an air army, so he can continue to pump hippogriffs, both versus the orc and the undead. Uh, the undead, though, uh, being on three frost realms, two destroyers is more like an anti-orc army. So he has the issue that he has to decide uh, against what race he has to prepare and he wants to fight. Uh, he's though very good on the levels already. I guess he homed Stein. A little bit in the meantime, as the Dreadlord is even almost reaching level 6, which is, of course, one of the best levels to have. Yeah, level 6 can be a game changer and that's a, a good pathway for a brace race at the end. I listed in the uh, Inferno drop and maintaining the ability to protect the last builds that you have as an undead. So, good advantage for the Dreadlord to be at level 6 here, uh, given if it gets to the late game as well. And Kolbas has enough, he finds Stein, knocks him out, at least one more building. That's level 8 actually, so we get heal spray in the mix. Uh, could be good later on, Sheik still ignores him. But yeah, it will be super tricky for Sheik, as he rightfully said in the chat, to prepare for anything really. The bats counter him, the hippos counter him, the panda's gonna counter him. 
What's he even doing? Like, this seems like a game that won't be decided. If it goes to Sheik, it won't be decided by execution, but rather, uh, s like, smart late game play. Mm -hmm, I guess so. And the keeper is also close to level 6, where the advantage shifts even more into the direction of the elf. So Sheik is going to have a hard time here, even with a lot of gold, to find an edge in this game. But if anyone can do it, I think it's Sheik, as he is so experienced and has a lot of pocket spreads and um, also a good chat game. So yeah, we will see how it's going. Still bounce level 1, so no reskill. And yeah, they really ignore Sheik a lot. And this might backfire on Sheik because yeah, if two guys are fighting constantly and one guy didn't, one, this guy usually falls behind in hero levels. Two, this guy was gonna get teamed. And three, at the moment, I think they will overestimate his gold count given how little he fought. Yeah, Sheik here 655, Dice 765, and Colab 876. So, of course, Colab in the uh, lead with the hero levels, and Dice's momentum. Uh, no, Ooh. sorry, Sheik's momentum slightly slowed down a little bit with the lacking in hero levels and being a little bit too passive and not decisive about who he's wanting to fight. Yeah, keep in mind now, two Camiras out of the fight, one got transmuted and one got staffed out because the Dice wanted to dodge the transmute with the staff. Uh, so yeah, now minus two Camiras before the fight and also the acid bomb now hits the Hippogriffs again. So another round of bets coming in. Great fight here again for Hope this time. So. Those guys are really uh, not sparing each other and it looks like it's gonna still be a close fight here with the demon level 6 metamorphosis of course hitting very strong and yeah now all the heroes out of mana except of the shadow hunter but the pen in the back line the casters all dropping very low there's still a healing ward in the back and now everything quite low big bad voodoo saving everything and the, oh oh, the keeper God. the keeper goes down Damage output so insane from this alchemist in chemical rage, dude. What the hell is happening? No damage, obviously, on the orc yeah, side during big bad voodoo. Now again, two heroes for dice against not too much either of Shadow. gold, but it should be enough. But yeah, dice has to TP out here. Is he losing another torrent? Yes, he is level seven for a demon, demon hunter. And yeah, now the spirit walker could revive some. Torin, I guess. But yeah, very nice fight here once again. Really, really enjoying that. Yeah, very impressive indeed. And Colab following in the footsteps of Dice in the previous fight there did split his bats into two groups there. One set of bats coming in the second, uh, connecting there and missing a breath of fire. So good micro from Colab. Colab then a great execution in these fights. And with every fight, it's a, it's a coin flip who gets the upper hand now. So out of three fights, I believe, uh, two to collab, one to dice. Big fight, shall I say, not the small fights. So we automatically yeah, know how the next game, uh, uh, the next fight goes, right? It, 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 it will be Dice's turn again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. But Kolab, yeah, Kolab I think to, uh... everything is decided within the first five seconds of the fight. It's all about how the bats connect with the hippos. Is the alchemist able to land a good acid bomb that hits a lot of hippogriffs? And yeah, here once again, I think the hippos were very clumped up for the first round of bats. And then the second group of hippos came from behind, but there was still the acid bomb ready and again hit everything. And the second pack of bats killed the rest of the hippogriffs. And yeah, so it happened that Kolb come out ahead of this fight again. And now even adding some, well, pretty much transitioning fully to ground, right? And now we can see the uh, increase in hero levels here. Collab again, still on the upwards trajectory for his hero levels and dice as well. But yeah, Sheik, I'm questioning, uh, watching his replays, he's usually pretty much more aggressive than this, but playing extremely passive here as a uh, vastly fallen behind a little bit. Yeah, we don't have any strong ultimate so far. Um, that could bite him. He's stacking up on scrolls, so he's very, very well aware that he will need them in the fights against uh, the bats and the thorns aura and breath of fire, etc. But 
Wonder if that's gonna be enough. But now finally, after 15 minutes, he decides it's time to kick out Stein. <laughs> yeah. And once someone is trying to kill him, he is definitely suggesting something uh, in his favor. <laughs> like free one versus Sheik now. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure how I like this play by Sheik, honestly. I mean, it's of course the quote unquote mannered play, but he's gonna fall behind in the hero levels now. Um, and if Corp is continuing to fight against Dice and trade evenly all game long, they will have like 9 and 9 hero levels. And once they reach like 10k gold or something, they definitely will stop and turn on Sheik. And if they turn on Sheik, it's mostly gonna be a 2v1. And yeah, then good luck, Sheik, with your hero levels against those. So Colab and uh, Sheik are both in a green here to take out. Uh, Stein, unfortunately, is not really getting the enough space. And did burn through his 8,000 gold bank. So looking like uh, it maybe lights out for Stein here. Yeah, Stein's so strong the entire game. Uh, you definitely need to team up against him. Such a threat with that level 4 Alchemist. Uh, cannot be seeing him on the map anymore. And Sheik, of course, too fearful of the 4 Alchemist. So it needs Stein out before Stein is in a winning position. Definitely. This is nightmare material, mate. And so the hippos are falling, being slowed, absolutely wrecked. And that's exactly how Sheik got the levels. Level 6 Dreadlord. Also, Lich should be close. Yep, one more kill or two more kills, and then he got it. But we got another round. Uh, have one on the house at the bottom. Torrent. But 50 only for Corp, keep in mind, against 90 for Dice. But a lot of useless Hippo. Um, yeah, and the Torrent here in the ground battle doing quite well. But of course, level 7 Panda here really strong. But keep her close to level 6. And if he reaches level 6, gonna be very hard to fight uh, without any mana for the Orc. <laughs> Oh, the, the fairy! Lot. The fairy did a ton of AoE damage against everything yeah. was on autocast there. Ay, 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 ay. No more heal scroll, I guess. So, time to get out. Maybe with the mountain giant. Oh, so Ooh, lucky. Close. 13 HP. Yeah, it's so funny how Dice is on 90 supply, but barely is able to fight a 50 supply orc because um. he's heavy on hippos. While Stice and Colab were having a little dance together again, Sheik decided to make an entrance point into uh, Dice's base and poke and prod, so... Okay, doesn't seem to be too comfortable now, though, with everything poisoned, everything low, very little mana as well. The tension back off Stein, though. <laughs> True, he survives <laughs> a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what was it? Uh... Something torture. I've heard that before, but it's like uh, trying to make somebody think that they are safe for so long, but just beat them down a little bit more, let them think they're safe again. Grubby uses it a few times. I can't remember what it's called, though. Well, if you as a native speaker doesn't know, we certainly don't know either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, native speaker. Like, Scottish has got his own dialect and stuff, you know. <laughs> I'm surprised you actually understand me, so... Yeah, hats off. Yeah, I watched a little bit of Harry Potter, you know, that helped. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nice. So you're you're well versed in Scottish then. Yeah, I'm pretty much uh, born and raised in Glasgow, you know, it's uh... <laughs> Man, I can hear the Scottish coming out you yeah. like, I'm starting to think, I'm starting to think you may be partially Scottish. I'm wearing a kilt right now, you know, in preparation for you to come on the show. I knew it. I, I could just tell. <laughs> Stein, uh, Stein out Stein is welcome here. Lizzie says, uh, pot him. So Stein, no heroes. <laughs> Still, so usually I like to say as uh, somebody has one hero and a dream, but Stein doesn't even have a hero. He's uh, he's just got a dream and literally a last build and just about to go out. Yep, I guess that's the call now. That's the last Moonwell. And yeah. of course no Wisp. So that is it now for Stein. Yeah, and Kolb, both Kolb and, uh, and Dice very high on gold still, like, you wouldn't expect that. They had three to four really high supply fights where both lost a lot. Uh, but yeah, they are pretty much at the same gold amounts, and I think Dice mined even more than Kolb did. So yeah, again, props, big props to Kolb, and Geek is now plus 10k gold, plus 11k gold. 
also not too far behind in the hero levels, so I would have expected worse. So he's of course also still in a prime position. With having, I think, the best FFA endgame of those three. But yeah, we're gonna see. So here's a question for you, Rilaz. I wonder if you'll know. If you're in a high upkeep or even low upkeep, if you use transmute, do you get 100% gold? Or is it taxed? It is taxed. Wow. It is fully taxed. Lizard. That needs changed. <laughs> if that needs changed for an even stronger transmute, you're yeah. mad. <laughs> yeah, of course. Transmute is not scary enough, you know. Why not just lose the unit and give all the gold to the opponent? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they might listen. Don't give them any that ideas. That the undead yeah. building selling is not affected by upkeep, so that was also... Relax, relax. That's that's close to home, man. Like, come on, keep this on low. I mean, we are the weakest race, so that's just fair. We are. See, Neo, <laughs> Neo gets it. Neo gets it. I've said this all along. Nobody listens to me. <laughs> Dude, I'm seeing the I'm seeing the Reddit uh, messages already about that comment. Yep, yep. You should at Neo, but at back to Warcraft if yep. you are definitely happy about his comments about Undead, because Undead, I've, coming from the mouth himself, is the weakest race ever to be existed. So. Clip it, share it, spread it. There you go. Yep. You'll see uh, people with pitchforks outside your house soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> so she comes in rough here with AMS and the Unholy Frenzy, but he finds himself pretty much sandwiched by the two others. So is he going to take a fight? Because he knows that if he, as soon as he takes a fight against one, the other will interfere here. Or what exactly here was the, was the plan? Go 3x fights. 3x fight, I guess, fighting everyone against everyone, which never works, by the way, because someone will always kite and someone will always be the one tanking. <laughs> I see that Dice improved his English recently since he joined the FFA community. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly my thoughts. I thought, oh my gosh, Dice is typing? <laughs> there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that I... tranquility was very, very short. The Inferno will, of course, last. So... We got the dream fight of Sheik versus Dice in the one-on-one. -on -one. Kolbas just waiting in the wings here for the perfect connection. Maybe clean it up once everything is low. Transmute, of course, here and there. But that seemed to be the first fight and very, very even. But Dice is just, uh, I don't know, he got rabies or something. Just taking the next one. <laughs> yeah, and Sheik is saying, as I said, no chance for the Keeper Aura. Maybe that will help Dice thinking about reskilling it to level 3. Yeah, you Thorns. never Thorns. something like this. <laughs> Thorns far too scary. Far too scary against uh, uh, an undead uh, air army. So scary. There's not much left of that orc air army though. Still dice unwilling to engage. Nothing to attack for the hippos really. Yeah, and Rubis again end up in a dice versus Pulp fight here. Yeah, dice can't really take this engagement as he was already tanking Sheik. Yeah, very, very curious why Dice turned back and attacked Kola, because Dice doesn't really have the army to really, even though Kola's sitting here with uh, 50, it doesn't really have the army to fight him, and also had low mana, low heroes, low units. So, Overstein is welcome a little bit. Wow, that's level 9 alchemist. Wow, 9, almost 8, and 7. And yeah, as you said, he's on 50 supply, and... He will not be taxed if he sells, but of course, people don't like getting sold, so you should be careful with that and ready to be attacked for it. <laughs> Dice calling out uh, being owned by Dice in collab owning him, so it's a strange uh, circle of life happening here, but yeah. He, uh, he's catching up at least on some hero levels, so that's promising, but yeah, as you rightly pointed out, the as the late game comes along, essentially having an alchemist that's able to just recuperate gold as well as denying you supply uh, becomes very uh, an interesting dynamic. Yeah, he's of course going to be able to sell all the worms. That's a lot of income and will make up for the cost of bats that he will definitely need at some point, or even wyvern that are coming now again. 
Um, yeah, I don't know how Sheik is supposed to break the circle. Maybe more chitin. This is what I got told when I was first in the uh, night elf. Middle of the game, I asked, how can I beat this guy? And he's he, and he types back, just kite more. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Yeah, just play like happy is the one-on-one -on -one equivalent to that. Easier yeah, said man, than yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, happy's, happy's a specimen uh, of a player, so definitely uh, not as easy said uh, not as easy done as it is said though uh, here we see an illusion one being used again a couple of illusions hopefully to debate that uh, transmute into an illusion rather than actually to the worms but yeah may lose a worm straight away Ooh, here's the fight again we heard the transmute we see the infernal is dice getting involved already not just yet let the other players weaken each other, but Big Bad Voodoo, man, I've rarely seen so much Big Bad Voodoo being effective in the fights as we never see it in one-on-one, -on -one, really. All the AoE spells done by Shig. And he's losing a lot, but he wants to trade at this point, I guess. Bad connecting again for yet another worm. That was costly. Shig doing a little bit of a better position at the end there. Did try to kite a little bit, but... A little too late, lost a lot of units before trying to do the chitin. Very, very frustrating with these heal wards, so you, you put in a destroyer to try and uh, dispel it, but that essentially goes down, so... Uh, very difficult to fight an orc in this position, especially such a strong orc uh, with the acid bomb to just get stuck on your units, so all units do fall low very quickly. And orc here, being able to recover with heal wards uh, and spirit link, of course. Yeah, and at this stage also heal spray, uh, plus the heal scrolls, of course. There's a lot of sustain in that regard. The undead can't really have, like coil, of course, nice, but single target in these fights won't help you that much. Mm -hmm. yep. are under attack. I know I know all too well about this. <laughs> yeah, we need an uh, area of effect coil, maybe. Uh, I I prefer not to have like uh, people chapping at my door and looking to lock me away, so I'm not going to say anything about undead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's better. It's better. Yo. Yeah, <laughs> you, you're a wise man. Well, yep. Undead are so strong as they are. There's no need to change them. You know, like keep them, <laughs> keep us, keep us where we are. Like, yep. <clears throat> <clears throat> yep, yep. I, I yep. definitely agree. Yep. Twitch chat yep. seems to be agreeing as well. We have a lot of production for Sheik again, going back up to eighty or a hundred. I guess a hundred at this point. Same goes for Colbus with lots more air. Uh, just dice a little passive at the moment. Yeah, I see um, Sheik is actually asking to let go ground units, but I've tried in the ladder asking people to play a little bit more fair. Doesn't work. <laughs> this is war, dude. There's no fairness. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, if you have an alchemist that can sell everything, of course you're getting teamed in the late game. May come to fruition. Yeah, of course. Uh, alchemist level 9, vastly approaching level 10. Such a scary boy in general with the uh, chemical rage, transmute, as you said earlier, healing scroll, uh, healing scroll, healing spray, and uh, acid bomb. Overall, very strong skills on this hero in general, and also mass sustain as well. Later in the game, being able to just whatever units you produce, uh, you're just feeding the other opponent more gold. So exactly. it makes a very precarious situation where you can't actually take any units on the map at a certain point because you fear that you just basically build the army of the opponent. And Sheik responds by more worms, which uh, will eventually be more gold. But all right, we might have a little fight here, stomp at least. But we got the staffs ready as so often. More production also. The next uh, 100 supply fights are coming, but Sheik is already preparing for the late game, as we can see on the right hand side. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. The Inferno trying to make a little place for uh, a Necropolis. Or potentially may even, may elect, I've done this at one point, but yeah, he had built a Banshee sitting in his base right now, probably going to steal a Wisp. Ooh, not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, I got that off our viewer. I was, I had nothing left over, just the heroes, uh, a temple and uh, a staff, uh, a statue. And one of my viewers says like, why don't you build a Banshee and recover for there? And yeah, I, I recovered. Never won me the game, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> Stauder covered. Uh, the idea was good, uh, probably was lacking the execution then. Yeah, and here's a here's a plot twist. It was actually against uh, Sheik, so yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Not fun. Using the undead units against the main undead dude, that doesn't feel right. Well he sent uh he sent some uh accolades under my nose straight into my main to take the gold main. Of course for me <laughs> that was an accolade gifted to me, so I took the accolade and Sheik of course came back, realized and finished <laughs> the job. Oh man, yeah, you can't threaten him that way. Um He'll punish that. Even though he's a funny and trolly guy, that was yeah, probably yeah. a little bit too much. He's uh, definitely a lovable guy. Got a good characteristic about him. Has, I, d I don't know has him too not, much. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, has not really responded to my love letters recently, so I don't know what's wrong. Uh, maybe uh, he is... Uh, maybe he's taken already. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> he's a little bit of an enigma. Um never talking too much like when he talks it's kind of nice and friendly but yeah he's not r r r writing books that's for sure but we got another fight and all three people are here in the fight tranquility going through that's a big help at least for a little bit uh, there was an entangle against the shadow hunter ultimate and a lot of useless hippos once again yeah pull up uh, up, uh basically mostly Round army making the air essentially useless after using the bats, uh, but chimeras do come in from left hand side and are targeting the uh, torrent here, which disintegrate under chimeras. But with the heal wards and sustain from shadow and also the healing spray from alchemist, does indeed keep me around a little bit longer. Oh, Panda's back, trying to get a connection to the back line. Hits nicely. Everything is burning. Ouch! That hurt. Fighting an ultimate of a demon hunter, never easy, but especially if it's paired with Panda and Chimeras. Oh my god. Ultimate on the undead side to take the corpses away. That's actually genius. Costing so much. TC down for the first time. Alchemist not looking too healthy. Shadow Hunter not looking too healthy. And this is a little bit of a disaster for Stein now. Uh, for Stein, for Kolb. Look. Oh, Kolbas. I've been calling him Kolab. Kolbas. <laughs> yeah, I thought it's just no. his, his nickname from you, you know? <laughs> well, you saved me a little bit of embarrassment, but I eventually caught up with myself and realized what I've been saying the whole time. So Kolbas, Kolbas, not Kolabs. What the hell am I saying? Feels like we got some time to get that fixed. At the end of the game, nobody will remember well, at all. Now they're shining, we've shone a light on it, probably will be, <laughs> will be uh, noticed as the game goes on, but yeah, cool bass, cool bass, right. Uh, I, I think I've done my introduction using cool bass, so, so I don't know what happened. It doesn't matter, dude. People in the Warcraft scene are pretty old, so they tend to forget very fast. It's all good. Jeez, Neil. You, uh, <laughs> you're looking for that fight. <laughs> you're, you're out here. You're out here putting the gloves on, waiting for somebody to challenge you, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a 15 minute delay by the time they respond. I will have forgotten uh, <laughs> what I said, so it's going to be fine. S sorry, I forgot. What did you say? Uh, what? No, I... Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Warcraft, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kobas. good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. But yeah, so a little bit of uh, quiet team, passive team, all are now uh, trying to decide who is next for the platter of uh, bititude, shall I put it? But... Um, yeah, passive game starts happening again, and Sheik showing a little bit of boredom here is spawning the uh, Inferno back in, clearing a little bit of the woods again. I'm wondering when he is uh, going to get himself a Wisp, though. There should be one in the map somewhere. I guess so. Right-hand side has some, but kind of hard to scout. We don't see too many shades running around at the moment. I think it's just one, maybe two. It's a big map though, not a lot of coverage. And same goes for like witch doctors or something. I don't see any sentry wards. Not too much information for either of the players. Yeah, a little bit of uh, maybe oversight for the players now, not really scouting as much um, as they probably should. Because, you know, you can rely on some chat, but chat is easily manipulated. So you are more. Uh, better to actually rely on your own scouting abilities than actually listen to what they are saying. Yeah, I would never, never listen to an FFA player. They just lie, I don't know, 23 hours a day. Um, and you can't rely <laughs> on them, especially on Sheik. 
I don't know Colbus Manip game too much. I would assume Dice is not the strongest yet, but for sure working on it. Yeah, I mean, Dice has shown vast improvements in his capability of actually uh, relaying information on the chat and even participating in it. I am uh, I'm delightfully surprised at how much he's been chatting today. Like, he must have a, a good time, good mood, woke up on the right side of the bed, had a good cup of coffee. Like, I'm pretty happy about Dice's participation in the chat today. Yeah, for sure. Like, when I was casting Team Battle Royale, he was barely talking and got manipulated a lot and misled a lot like the classic mistake of a one-on-one -on -one, uh player making a transition but dude if neutron is your coach um it's not a pretty time while you're learning so you want to make fast improvements to not getting beaten every time in chat uh so yeah i i i, I can understand why he learned so so quickly yeah i was granted the uh the pleasure to actually co-cast with uh, Neutron. And yeah, Neutron uh, not really shying away from calling Dice out on just small mistakes. So I could imagine the pressure Dice was uh, was under when he was coached by uh, Neutron. So yeah, of course the pressure. pressure let's, worked, ca though. let's call it pleasure of a Neutron co-cast. Uh, <laughs> right? you're, you're a polite man, I see, I see. Will we have another yeah, fight? Yeah. Uh Sleep just a little bit too late. That torrent is gone. Massive AoE. Sheik is getting more XP and away we go. Walker bringing back the torrent as the TP goes through but does lose two bodies in the uh, process of that. But yeah, of, of course that uh, transmute popping in probably aggroing shoot quite a, a bit losing his worms straight away to the um, transmute. But yeah, as rightly pointed out, never got the sleep in before the transmute come through. Now you've essentially got three targets to sleep at variable points in the battle so a bit more uh difficult to decide who to sleep when i would say in my my opinion yeah that's gonna be really tricky attacking the base now two on one maybe with dice he still has some chimeras they can decimate the orc base quite a bit and it's a rather big base i'd say with a lot of spikes lots of towers so yeah why not rattle down the base yeah, as we often see, uh, the base destruction usually happens uh, and they try to eliminate the potential to be able to mass produce as quickly and easily and readily as uh, they are able to. Oh, bats are coming in, trying to weaken this army, but there's a lot of heal scrolls, so I don't see... Oh, this protection scroll was so good, keeping a lot alive, but how do you heal this now? You need to... Here comes a big bad voodoo once again. Oh my god, the next bats. Two worms at the same time. Transmute, I guess, is ready soon. The raiders take care of the rest of the undead army and Sheik has to run as fast as possible. Sheik's chat there. Fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> He's certainly out. <laughs> Halfway through the fight, he runs back and types at the same time. Man, this guy is a gem. Yeah, I mean, Sheik also having a taste of collab there. Uh, Colbass, Colbass there. Um, and yeah, Colbass really is standing its ground and putting the pressure on everybody who tries to enter in his base with that invitation. Yeah, will they go into the lion's den once again is the question. Is Dice going to try his luck now? I guess the cooldowns should be over in a bit. The clarities are running. And Colbass should be in fighting shape very soon. Yeah, maybe uh, now at this point they'll take turns trying to bring uh, Cole Bass down. <laughs> uh, so he's not so threatening. But again, this alchemist, uh, easy to recover some gold from your enemies anyway. So uh, it's a strange one. You, you pick a hero based on, I don't know, some form of uh, game plan you have. But the hero you unfortunately pick elicits you getting teamed at one point. So yeah. such a fun and complicated game mode to play in at least as an undead i just know that if i get high hero levels uh, i generally will get teamed anyway so <laughs> i've just accepted that as a point i mean colp uh, choose this faith he knew exactly that this would be happen on a big map like this it was very very likely to happen uh so you shouldn't be too surprised now to get teamed but feels like even with all the experience of, of Sheik and the skills of Dice, they can't break him. And I really don't know how this is going to continue. He seeks his 
uh, lack an offense now, m moving out a little bit, and I wonder if he's getting caught off guard outside his base, if things look a little different, maybe. Yep, transmutes straight on the Chimera, moves back a little bit, brings the bats in, Dice moves back a bit as well. And Dice, of course, using the chat to his advantage, <laughs> is so unhappy about getting the uh, Acid Bomb on his hippos and also a transmute off at the same time. So Kobas, quick with the uh, fingers there, uh, surely threatens Dice back a bit. <laughs> For hamburger. <laughs> Oh, Kobas, cool, very experienced player, of course, playing five years. Um, yeah, as you, you previously mentioned, knows exactly what the punishment for picking this hero is, but still ballsy enough, if you don't mind the swearing, uh, to, do, to do it anyway. And it's shown, you know, Kobas cool, is prevailing. Yeah, we see Dice typing once again, saying he's sleepy. That surprises me a bit. Sometimes he plays uh, the North American Cups until like 6 a.m. my time, which is, I think, 8 a.m. his time. So sleepy already, huh? Maybe needs a little nap, but that is not allowed as the next fight might come in. Bats again. Here we go. Transmute as so often. Always the same rotation in this fight so far. And he can't really prevent a lot of damage from these bats. Yep. Uh, Dice here did split the hippogriffs in anticipation of the bats coming in, but Kobas just left all of his army behind and just poked and prod at the heroes. Let Dice clump up his uh, hippogriffs again, sent them, sent the bats back in. So Dice trying to micro and stop the bats from connecting, unfortunately, just lapses in his judgment for a little bit and loses some hippogriffs. But the weakened hippogriffs that were connected upon by the bats are now under the nice refreshing breeze of the tranquility by keeper there we go we're all back to green i wonder if we see any transition transitions by sheik but not really there was a burrow research i was wondering for a second if he wants to be as mad and go for fiends but no that uh, shouldn't really be an option he's just not building any units anymore yeah, Fiends, uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of them. I use them 1v1 play or, you know, 4v4 or so, but like, and free for all. <laughs> Tried. Mm, <laughs> no great. No, against this TC and this Alchemist and this Panda, uh, no, probably nope. not a good idea. No, kind of stuck to Worms, Zestro, and, uh, and Gargs, unfortunately, so, yeah. But yeah, yeah, of course, of course, the undeads are so strong in this count position, so very fearful. I wonder if he saves all the 25k for the very, very late game for items and invo potions and uh, hiding Necropolis. Yeah, very curious why she uh, Well, I know, of course, he's not wanting to spend much more gold because you're just feeding coal bass here, but... And uh, each engagement with coal bass or dice, it's not really going in his favor so yeah i think uh, probably game plan is to let these two whittle themselves down quite a little bit more and then come in with a decent army and hopefully get the upper hand in some engagements yeah sheik says this himself like whenever i pump i lose and that is definitely the case seems to be a stalemate now between kolb and dice is also dice is not willing to fight anymore and kolbos wants dice away like um I don't know what the next move is, really, because everybody is afraid of the other. Yep, game of chess at the moment, and everybody's kind of under check. <laughs> uh, they don't really want to extend too far because two may weaken themselves too much for the other person to be able to swipe in and punish. So yeah, this is uh, the bizarre, weird, middle-late game where nobody really wants to fight too much, but... At one point, lucky enough, you're casting, so <clears throat> this usually puts enough pressure on them to actually make them fight faster <laughs> than they would usually fight. So hopefully, uh, knowing that they are under very keen eyes, they may actually like to fight sooner than they would in, uh, originally fight. Yeah, I hope that goes for Sheik and Colt, because Dice doesn't care, dude. He plays uh, as if nobody is watching. It doesn't matter if the game goes four minutes or two hours. This kid doesn't care about anything. He gives me that impression. He's uh, an interesting personality. I remember shouting him out a couple of times after games that he won 
And I think after like 20 times saying well played and stuff, I think I got a smiley face from I, I celebrated. <laughs> wow, from yeah, friend. you can definitely celebrate that. That's yeah. rare. Barbecue, friends over, <laughs> champagne, amazing. I was so, so happy. How did you explain this uh, to your friends? Like, oh yeah, there's this 23-year-old Russian kid and he said, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, a smiley face to me. So <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I just made it such a under just you know a family get together, but inside gotcha. I knew exactly and why gotcha. I was celebrating. Yeah, yeah, you better yeah, hide you that. See? You better hide that. Under disguise here, under disguise, you know, learn a couple of uh, tricks in the trade. <coughs> but yeah, looking like a little bit of a team between uh, Dice and uh, Sheik onto Kobas. Yeah, and they're only bringing the heroes as so often when you're up against an alchemist that worm will. F be gone in a bit yeah transmute that worm looking very as you said juicy very much a nice uh, gesture of good ball from Sheik here but I don't think she wants to lose it but probably will lose it and here we go alchemist pops out <laughs> transmute goodbye worm <laughs> slip a little bit too late and yeah and he's trying to punish him but with 1500 HP not even Coronova can do a lot trying to nuke the bats as well but retreating immediately under the cover of a heal Ward big and the coming. Big Bad Voodoo. Big Bad Voodoo interrupted, of course, with sleep. Uh, however, Shadow is still taking up in the bottom here. Not really able to provide any healing, but... Yeah, Panda under a little bit of threat here, and the Raider was taken away, so Panda can be staffed out. But yeah, Colbass losing a little bit of uh, units here, extending a bit too forward. One may wonder why he actually is trying to fight outside of the safety of the towers yeah he got, she can. he got baited a little i guess by uh maybe the the success of the previous fights um maybe a little over eager yeah i mean she can dice of course doing a great job here and uh disrupting the units here kiting them out and here comes the death and decay by lich which is quickly shut down by the hex by the shadow a little bit of a bait uh, another mana burn, more AoE, and the shop is down. Um, probably not the only one, and you can definitely rebuild, but it's a bit annoying as there's no clarities, no mana potions at the moment. And more AoE damage, the breath, of course, fantastic. Carrion Swarm can be nice into all the bats. So, yeah, some damage done. The Kobas using this, uh, the chat to great hands here, pleading with Dice to stop. So, Dice being the nice, happy, go lucky person he is, does choose to actually go back a little. Okay, he's listening. First time in his life, he's listening to some authority. <laughs> wow, I, I have no comments. But once again, he used the animate dead. I really like that to just uh, take care of the corpses so there's no resurrection of the walkers. Yep, the strongest spell in the whole game is animated <laughs> dead. <laughs> Especially since the disease code upgrade, like. I cannot thank them enough for that introduction. That was the best investment into Animated Dead I have ever seen. Yeah, the the development team of uh, of Warcraft Three just wonderful. <laughs> yeah, Going. throw a little bit too much shade here yeah. on everything, <laughs> but probably deserved though. So again, yeah, another little bit of a passive game, and Kobas now saying in the chat that he is now committing to. Sheik, who is now transitioning to Necros. I think Rulos is back. Yo, welcome back. You what sound like it? you lost your microphone on the way. We cannot understand you, really. Uh, I think Discord... Yeah. There you go. Welcome back. Yep, I just unplugged my mic. Sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what am I witnessing? Two solo pros in front of the base of Kolb with the solo pros having 20k each and the poor FFA player were on 7k. The poor FFA uh, player was pretty much owning for half an hour. Yeah, true. I can see it on the hero levels, level 10, 9, 9, wow. 
Oh, next fight right there. With a little bit of web involved, actually. There was a transition. He wanted to go for, I don't know, some necros or so, but that might just be backfiring uh, again. Similar supply at the moment. Lots of damage done, but very little kills. And as we talked about before, there is so much sustain for Corp and TC in the front row, plus this alchemist. Oh boy, the poor fiends. Wow, but indeed, Sheik actually making the Fiends look pretty good here. Uh, I actually said earlier that he probably won't transition the Fiends. Of course, Cast Across happens. Sheik does transition, doing a great job in Kane, but unfortunately, he's a stomp by TC, and now Fiends easy pickings. Uh, TC and the army of the Orc just munching through the Fiends here. Sheik having to retreat into the sanctuary of his towers. And yeah, weird transition. Necro transition, but yeah. Keeping them obviously in his base at the moment, not trying to show his hand of cards yet. All right, nobody really wants to continue to attack Sheik after that uh, failed transition. But yeah, the kiting looked strong for a while, but there was also, like as we said, so much sustain. Uh, I think two heal scrolls, now Kolbas, I guess, before he fights again, needs to replenish mana a bit and has to stock up on scrolls once again. And Dice is just chilling for the most part. Yeah, very uh, interesting <clears throat> transition for Dice, uh, sorry, not Dice, Sheik, to bring in some Necros here. Uh, so... Interested in seeing how this will go as the time goes on. Of course, Orc having the access to Spirit Walkers and Wives usually find the Necros just disintegrate and the casting skeletons offer just XP. Of course, at this point, only Colab or Colbass having to gain two additional levels, but still. <clears throat> interesting. I'm interested in seeing how Sheik will make this transition work. I don't know if uh, Rulas is gone again or if his mic just broke. But no, I'm here. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you just decided to not interact with us. That's also okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. I didn't take that personally. Don't worry. No, no, never, never. <laughs> it's just how these... No, sorry. I, I was distracted. Did anyone, anybody talk to me? Not really. We just... Wanted to involve you into the conversation after you were gone for so long, but it's oh, okay if you, yeah, it's if you save your energy. <laughs> so I'm yeah. kind of it's it's kind of interesting that nobody really decided to attack the the main base of Dice because it's like that big with so many moon worlds and so much production. Yeah, and same for Sheik, pretty much. Like both Dice and Sheik should know about the gold count of each other, so it's not like. They are expecting each other to be dead or anything like that. But yeah, I, I still have to say it's pretty impressive that in a freeway against Dice and Sheik, Kolb is the one getting out ahead with level 1099 against like 876 of Dice. Yeah, but 90% of the engagements Dice and Sheik had with Kolbas. Kolbas looking extremely strong, kind of wiping the floor with them. And uh, we're seeing a little bit of a uh, shuffle forward from Dice's units. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what? he's doing the reverse moonwalk currently. Um, very impressive. Good micron skills, of course, shown by uh, Dice here at this point. Wow, uh, I couldn't see my, I couldn't believe my eyes at the moment. I thought I was lagging. Me too, oh. dude. Oh my! <laughs> but but turns out that Dice is learning how to robot dance and shuffle in Warcraft Three. That's impressive. We are seeing an involvement of this uh, very young, keen man here who is now able to use chat and uh, hack the game. <laughs> yeah, Sheik has a good idea. Make dice pay. Exactly. Of course Sheik he wants to take some pressure off of himself. Yeah, chat is uh, oftentimes overlooked. Of course, Sheik uh, called out regularly in the Discord by some people uh, uses the chat pretty advantageously. Uh, and is still hiding his necros uh, at this moment too, so 
Uh, it's not been scouted either. Yeah, not a great fan of this per se, especially once the shockwave gets level three, they should all just die. Maybe yep. against dice, it's a little better, but then there's of course wisps there. Is there still fairy dragons? I'm not sure, but he can transition rather quickly. So everybody should have an answer to that, but looks like they team up and go north. Yeah, both Kobas and uh, Sheik publicly teaming up against Dice, and Dice now actually not really lying uh, according to the usual FFA, uh, is actually saying that he's pumping up to 100 and is actually anticipating this push, so a lot of, lots of moonmills in the space, so, so I don't see this push going particularly good. Generally, I've seen people be successful in a 2v1, especially in the elves here, that can rely on the moon wells for healing as long as they target one person at a time and force that person back. And of course, Dice having so much uh, knowledge in the game already probably will focus on Sheik to push Sheik to TP and then will pay his attentions to Kolbass is my predictions. Uh, Sheik's so dirty, like he lets Kolb go first because Kolb said that he has one or two more armies after that and it's not he's not lying and Sheik says ah oh, okay if you have one or two more then you, you should go first and <laughs> uh, sitting on 19k himself but yeah Dice is uh, preparing to defend this 91 supply so yeah as we said one way to stop the teaming is let your main base die but not if your main main base is worth like 10k gold or even more so Dice Sheik's uh, Fiend's coming in handy here, did web the three Chimeras which have just fallen, not actually in the fight against the Orc here, so very disadvantageous given that the Chimeras Yeah, but I think that's the worst fighting position for Dice here, like, I mean, if he's actually taking a 1 versus 2 in his main base, why isn't he fighting in his main base, but just before that. SH? Oh, Dice! First bigger mistake by Colbus. Yeah. Dice there, yeah, of course, fighting in a very strange position, not really hidden behind the uh, Ancient of War and in the Moonwells a little bit. Really pays for it by the web of the fiends catching the Chimeras, as I said. Sheik did well here, gets more experience, didn't lose much or anything, really, has still half his army protected in his main, got some chimeras, 877, he's on the way to a strong late game position when we disregard that his army is probably getting hard countered. Yeah, yeah interestingly, actually, uh, abided by the agreement between him and Kolbas, he did web a couple of wives, but only actually picked off the hippogriffs. Ah, okay. Yeah, so some honor within thieves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Next fight. Um, wants to diminish the number of fairy dragons. That's a nice accomplishment. And Dice is... I don't know what he's trying to achieve here. Just running away now. There's an invo potion on the demon hunter who should be safe. But needs a staff relatively soon. Here comes the sleep. There's another staff of preservation. Hold on, he's not killing this demon, is he? Yeah. He can't. No, no. staff came through. Yeah. The keeper used the, uh, the anti magic shell there and uh, walked through, just collecting the demon hunter in time before the invo ran out. Okay, the panda finally woken up. Drunken haze, breath of fire, man. Damn alcoholic. Uh, just waking <laughs> up, already back to the bottle. Can't save that mountain giant, though. And Sheik says, well, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And oh, not even getting the bear. Oh, bear safe with six HP. Very fortunate. But here, uh, cool bass is coming in to collect his tax. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, nice bait. Nice saves for the staff. Wow. Tax evasion. A player's forces are under attack. Yep, the FBI will be investigation <laughs> under uh, under dice now. Uh, cool bass. Oh, right, dice. Jeez, I'm, I'm so confused right now. It's getting late. No worries, dude. Um, Dice now more or less comfortable. Losing a lot, but still on a big bank. Is burning through Kolba's bank. 
And Shake is by far the richest player in the game, but will that help him down the road? Yeah, 19k is not one to be uh, turned up at. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, again, I, I want to reiterate, the Necros here, probably not a great idea, but and I've scouted, probably will elicit a team in between Dice and Colbass on him. So maybe a little premature in bringing them into his base, given they get scouted. Yeah, and yeah. Dice, Dice seems pretty engaged in this game. Like he's even chatting and talking about buying clarity potions for Kolb because he burnt his mana so he can sell Sheik. Nice. Wow. This is uh, interesting to see that your opponent is now treating you with some nice clarity potions, <laughs> but... Won't probably help him in the long run. Uh, Infernal been taking away. That's also more levels. Close to level 9 on the panda, but there's... Shake for some revenge. That Infernal was dear and near to him. Gotta punish that keeper a little bit. Yeah, keep on focus, but running away with, with Anti Magic Show. Shika uh, doing a great job keeping the uh, Demon Hunter Ooh. slip. And wow, does lose the keeper after all, actually. That was impressive. I thought there was a staff, but apparently there wasn't. Panda is still weapon of mass destruction against these fiends. He might be. Stuck there, and he has a TP, can get out whenever. Sleep over sleep over sleep, trying to get a tavern rest, but not even that is working. Hold up, if he's making a little mistake, this panda could be dead as well, but no, not two mistakes in a row. Demon yeah, time to run up. There was a very nice sequence here by Sheik, like sleeping the demon hunter, dispelling the anti magic shell on the. Uh, the anti magic potion on the keeper who was in tranquility form, and then immediately coil Nova swarm. So yeah, nice kill here. Yeah, a little overlooked by, by Dice. Dice having a uh, staff on the keeper, uh, uh, staff on the demon hunter probably thought that he could have staffed the way keeper and saved that TP. But yeah, Dice straight away, uh, Sheik straight away with the dispel and the Cornova just eliminates the keeper before Dice's eyes. Yeah, not too sure whether the panda shouldn't sell his ring of protection for another staff, so that if this one staff carry is slapped, there is still a backup. Yeah, I've always, uh, I think it was Trunks I may have been speaking with earlier, like, uh, saying about, no, no, sorry, my apologies, Peanut. Uh, I was talking about the fact that elves, I don't know why they don't take advantage and usually put three staffs on the three heroes, or sorry, one staff per hero, uh, but usually says that sometimes it's better to have better items on one hero and boycott the staff on it in order to have better uh, better items. But yeah, you could probably sell the Ring of Protection here and get a staff on the panda, so I'm not entirely sure why he's not choosing a third staff. Another transmute, maybe. <laughs> no, 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 not yet. Okay, Cobos wants some action. There's some buildings left that, that you can wipe out if you want, but Jake, are you willing to fight this? No. Yeah, this is always an interesting point about the, uh, well, does sell a Shredder, so he does get some gold there. Uh, <laughs> probably not very happy she will be. But then he has enough wood, it should last him a lifetime, so it shouldn't be too bad. And he's pulling his uh, Necros and ma wheat wa meat wagons back a little bit, not to show coal bass them yet. Playing around the transmute cooldown, there's still lots of mana. Oh, blocking himself a little bit. Bye! Walker. Slowly but steady, Corp is running out of gold. He's not wrong when he says that he needs it. Shown the uh, strength of the animated dead, denying the revive as well from the other Walker. 
Wyvern getting webbed, of course. They are flying XP tomes, now grounded XP tomes. And the TC can't make a connection to the backline. That was sweet, thanks to the sleep again. And Cobra's not waking up the TC. That's quite a loss in this fight. Mm -mm. Up until now, at least. Now shifting the focus onto the DK. Stomp is active again, and bye-bye. Get out. Not without a Shaman, though. Yeah, that was a ni nice low supply fight um, by Sheik here. Sheik returns back for some vengeance here. Tries to take out the uh, walker before it goes. Shadow prevent that by the uh, Hex Ooh, here. It's quite risky here with the DK. So hurt, but yeah, everything here is plumped for the orc, so the TZ can't get in a good position for a storm. Now the TZ comes to him, that's quite handy, but yeah, still the alchemist is stuck, so no real follow up damage on the DK, but maybe a hex? Wow. Playing with fire here, Sheik. Yep. Coil is ready. All right, but man, this alchemist is packing a punch. Plus 29, max damage over 110 with insane attack speed. Of course, we mentioned transmute and how good acid bomb is, etc. But don't underestimate the right clicks. No, I yeah. think I, I think I read uh, at one point the alchemist with chemical rage is one of the highest DPS outputs of the heroes, I believe. Uh, given the orb of corruption is not um, involved. Although, Orb, I, I've got my own thoughts on Orb of Corruption. I don't really want to say it because I don't want to pick a deed. But uh, yeah, Alchemist is a uh, camp of rage, very strong here. And Sheik playing a little bit with fire, loses a couple of units to transmute. So feeding again Koba some extra gold. This game could still last like two hours, right? Relax. <laughs> you ask me? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Depends on the players. But yeah. they, they don't seem to be in the biggest rush, at least. But uh, I thought he would be the most greedy here. But he is down to 5.6k gold, of course, having the Alchemist helps in maintaining a little bit of the gold on the gold count. But yeah, there can also be some small things that trigger someone and the game goes fast. Or a two versus one into a main base and suddenly the third player tries to take advantage and goes for one versus two. So yeah, always potential for uh, something that speeds up the game. Oba's prodding into uh, Sheik's base now. Had scouted the Necros that were pushed to the back of the base, so as aware now, what is there? And I'm wondering if we'll be using chat to call him out. Yeah, worth mentioning, by the way, skipping the Blade Master, of course, also means that you have even more issues fighting against these fortified bases as you are missing out on the Blade Storm. That's usually always killing three to four towers in one go. Not only that, the illusions. I've seen Arenicus using mm. illusions pretty well, just sending them into bases and over time, yeah, do significant damage over over a, a, a long game. And Sheik not quite transitioned away from Fiend, still building a Fiend uh, into his army. And yeah, back into like a nice, peaceful, passive game where Dice just on the map with three heroes, the remainder of his army, which is not very much anyway, is sitting at home. Uh, Kobas looks to be the most active here, did state that if he didn't, if Sheik didn't back, he was suiciding, which is essentially, uh, he's going to keep pushing on Sheik. But generally, like, the first time somebody says that, it's easy enough to just disregard it. Uh, it's just a fair warning, right, Relaz? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you could brittle down the base with Shockwave, of course, but that's about it. Not really effective, as you need clarities constantly. Um, tricky. Yeah, now they call him out. Dice base is still huge, like four screens this entire base. Hard to handle, hard to destroy. 
That's why we all hate elves. Not everybody, okay, Sheik? Not everybody hates elves. Uh, elf spaces are difficult to break, but personalities, they're, they're nice people. They're very caring. Yeah! They like, they like the cheese, they don't like, you know, dry lands. Uh, yeah. Elves are good people. Most of just them. A yeah, ju <laughs> just a basis of a pain. <laughs> I've, I've learned that very time and time again, pushing into elf bases where they're, you don't usually, well, I don't usually account for the moon wells. And next thing I know, I'm fighting into, we are currently green units. Yep. So, <laughs> never push a night elf, night elf base uh, unless the moon wells are dry. Exactly. It's just some um, bad intended propaganda that you shouldn't push into an undead base. If you ask me, you can push in my base all day long. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to go too far with this because, of course, I don't really want to have my name picketed and people, you know, arresting me the night or sanctioning me. So, uh, or sectioning, not sanctioning. Jeez, my words are mixed up and I'm totally and utterly in awe with what I'm saying. But yeah, Night Elf Space, very difficult to push in, especially when full moon wells. And Dice has every moon well in here full, so. It's not under too much threat. And as you said, Neil, you can be using the shockwave to weaken down the base of dice. But very inefficient, of course, having to repurchase over and over again the clarities for this. Yeah, dice mentioned that he's getting tired and will pump and then fight, but I don't see too much of that yet. Just forcing the others to go to him. But and yeah, the others oblige. So, so here far, first death and decay, and as a little bit extended because the uh, the infernal stun went onto the keeper, so the keeper couldn't actually stop the lich from casting it. And Tyson, I think again goes for the worst play. He is not 100, but on 80, he has a lot of hippogriffs, and again he is choosing exactly this fighting position here outside of his base. When yeah. he accepted you that they were coming for him, for him. And he one by one, uh, Sheik single, one by one, Sheik single handily webs the Chimeras and takes him out. Now, uh, Dice noticing did focus Sheik a little bit. Sheik pushing back a wee bit here. Sheik is in the. Cycling on the hero once again, death and decay, uh, death and decay, animate dead, doesn't do too much. Sheik slowly losing lots of HP here. He can, of course, eat the units now. That's the upside of the changed animate dead. Ooh, breath of fire. Get a lot of heat in, but no death. Another TP on the keeper. Oh, he thinks they're heating up again. Yep, animated dead once again prevailing, showing the strengths of uh, undead, <laughs> nerf undead, terrible, <laughs> terrible race, so toxic, <laughs> horrible. <laughs> so, uh, how could somebody have such an amazing sick level six skill? So broken. So, this is an interesting conversation. The one player says, don't burn my ass. The other said, I'm coming to your ass. And Sheik says, <laughs> Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, it's oh. getting late. Everybody's a bit aroused about the past two hours. <laughs> I feel it. Wow. Of course, Dice evolving in his speech as time goes on. He is. Picking up some new linguistic skills. Uh, <laughs> very threatening as well. So <laughs> I knew it when he joined the FFA community that this is going to happen. At some point, it's inevitable. Hey, you never know. You may actually start talking in the 1v1 scene. Oh and boy. then I can't wait for your reaction. <laughs> yeah, we don't really have a lot of chat in the one-on-one -on -one games, but I uh, wouldn't be too surprised if, yeah, if yeah, it's DICE other. heating things up. You don't have a lot of chat. Yet. Yet, exactly. The the poison has already begun in Dice and Sheik, who usually regularly attend the Back to Warcraft weekly, so maybe, maybe yeah, Sheik I, and Dice. I can't wait uh, until they have a little <laughs> chat with Happy in the grand final. Gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, maybe Happy will start chatting one day. Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, I think this is actually the first chat game I see from Dice, and yeah, I'm pretty surprised that he is very talkative <laughs> for that. 
Well, it's took a lot to get my shell, but Transview gone through yet another Chimera. Yep, and it looks like Kolb is surpassing Dice in the gold count in a second with one or two more transmutes, but not if he loses the Alchemist, just the TP though. He is carrying three TPs, so yeah, definitely better safe than sorry. Yeah, I'm surprised how fast Dice was burning through his gold. Like one army and down to five and a half K. Yep, totally. And I'm also still surprised how they are not going on Shikada. Like Dice and Cope, at least from what I saw, they were fighting the entire game. Yeah, and cool, but weird. Wow, <laughs> nice reaction here on the steps. This time dodging it, so we wasted a mana potion. And still, the Entangle is very strong. Wow, she can't go to Baxter for one bear. Says, don't die. Acting as if he was the savior. Okay, Dreadlord on the fire, but yeah, he is Ooh, not the savior go. at all. Oh, yep. and the Dreadlord oh, falls, down, yep. burning a little bit of gold of Sheik, and that's exactly what we need for this game. Sheik, uh, obviously playing a great game here, saying that he is very, find it very difficult to revive the heroes that he loses, but still so lucrative here. 15k uh, compared to the, the other two, which are only sitting at 5k each. Yeah, I think Dice is just getting annoyed by this alchemist who is constantly telling the Chimeras once again here. Oh! And now a TP forced. And yeah, now we have a big Chimera backup, so this is not holdable for Copia. There is a play against 90. So Dice is really heavily pumping now and seems confident in a potential 1v1 that Sheik is not gonna allow as it looks having a shade here close to the fight and already luring here well that's the tier 3 falling that means no mana potions no more for now at least yo chimeras finishing this and this is great base trade opportunity of course with all the chimeras trying to get one more kill out doesn't but yeah that is half the base gone basically yeah, very unfortunate. Cool Basque and the, uh, the full brunt force attack from uh, Dice here. And Sheik sneakily trying to get in the back here to take off another couple of Chimeras. And Cool Bass using Transmute, I think only on one or two units, having to TP three times. So not really doing good trades here, losing his full main as well. Yeah, looking uh, a little bit bleak now for Cool Bass in this position, but. And another question, he could be using the uh, Invis pot and really, if, if Dice already is annoyed, could be Invis in, into Dice's base and just taking a couple of uh, Chimeras at a time. It's worth the trade, right? Yeah, I'd love that, dude. Make him even more sour w with little moves like that. He might <laughs> need a Tele Staff as well to just get out. But yeah, why not? Yeah, I've seen it from a Peanut in a in-house game where Peanut went... <laughs> Um, Dark Ranger, and all he done was kept running back into Luchel. I think it's Luchel. So Lucy's base and stealing a, stealing a, a worm and st uh, staffing it out, then staffing it out himself over and over again. Collected an abundance of worms. So something uh, a good option here to you know really turn somebody even more sour than they already are. But Dice uh, really seems like he's had enough, dude. He was healing up a little bit and pumping again. And off we go. Bottom left is the goal. But he'll be running into a wall of six zeros. Yeah, I'm um, not really convinced this is probably the best play kind of suiciding into Cole Bass because I don't think, I don't think uh, Dice has scouted the transition, even though the transition is not really that relevant. It's gonna be expensive here for Dice to fight one versus two, and this is all playing into the cards of Sheik. Like I think Sheik's game plan should be to try to weaken Dice uh, together with Cope, and then once Cole would stop, he's just going for it 
uh, more and more, but now, well, now this fight looks kinda good for dice. Yeah, first he gets the TC ult off, now the Alchemist is down to 50%. Feels like he can hold his ground, for now at least. Kodo is gone as well, there's still so many Chimeras up in the air. It's and a bit greedy from Sheik to not bring more of his army. And Kobe is suffering. Ace done a great job. They were focused on one and then the other in that fight. They were not, never really felt the chitin so much. Oh, the the fiends, and almost the almost fall almost. So he goes, go again. Yeah, it was just in the... Um, Alchemist almost fallen again. Another TP force. Yeah, I was just saying, uh, Dice doing a great job focusing one instead of splitting his uh, attention on both and not really falling for Sheik's chitin ability there. So never really lost too much against Sheik. Oh, Dice wants to go for the throat. Takes out the towers. Koba still licking his wounds, but uh, not much to fight anymore of course one finger of death with transmute but mana's looking bad alchemist looking bad tc ultimate might still be down wow uh, dice uh dice staying here if kobas agrees to team with him to go on sheik then he'll stop and sheik of course virtue signaling that he's one to help kobas yeah, and she, I think, is very fine. Like, he's saying that he's gonna help, but in reality, I think he's just fine if Dice is killing Cope and he goes for the 1v1. Uh, but now, Cope suggested to go on Sheik, and Dice, I think, wants to agree, which is now again bad for Sheik. But yeah, let's see how this game goes. Like, can be very hard to estimate the gold count of Sheik correctly. Oh man, they uh they that fiend the fiend walking sound is starting to trigger me a little bit. <laughs> yeah oh, man. Oh what the hell? The, the, over was, and over again like there was some patch where they just buffed up this audio of the fiend sound. Jesus Please go back to Garg, Sheik. <laughs> I mean, it was fine for a certain amount of time, but that is slowly but surely starting to grate on me. <laughs> oh, so difficult. Maybe the fiends come and hunt you in your dreams. <laughs> That's where, hey, they better not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, the fiends are actually working in a little bit of favor here. Fiend, uh, the web picking off a couple of uh, units here and there. Uh, so the. Kenny have uh, been a little bit of worth. She's got like the abomination of an army here though. Gargs, uh, Banshees, Necromancers, Fiends. A, bit, a little bit of everything and also meat wagons. And yep. now we're pulling them together. For the casters, Dice might not be ready. He has like three Dryads and a Fairy. That's not too much against them. Of course, there's Metamorph and Breath of Fire, etc. That can help, but... I don't know if Dice knows about this caster army. Yeah, I don't think it's been scouted. I thought Cola, uh, Colbas did scout at one point, but I think they were pulled back just in time for them not to get vision of them. So, yeah, it's still going undetected by both. Yeah, the stalemate seems to be back. Or, oh, Dice moving south. That was a weird breath of fire. Maybe the rest of the army got cold and the panda wanted to help, I don't know. <laughs> i never seen it, I was busy looking at uh, Kobas and uh, Sheik, usually the Breath of Fire, in case the, uh, the shade is following the movement of uh, the Night Elf. Ah, damn, yeah. you're right. That's, uh, yeah, that's what you're here for, that's what you're here for. Yeah, at least I offered one piece of information for people. <laughs> <laughs> Plus the great accent, of course. Oh, thanks man, I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> You know, back up to the mum. <laughs> All right, let's go, everybody. This is a bit of a bigger army by Sheik, I guess. Telegraphing that he wants to go back to Gargs, but just a fake, of course, at least for now. 
Trank going through for a long time, actually. The Cyclones are getting better and better every time. Heal scroll and shake. DK out of mana. One more heal scroll available. And Dice can hold his ground for quite some time. But now Suffering starts. He's forced into Metamorph. Still, I don't want to say defeat 2-1-1, but definitely surviving 2-1-1. Yep, Dice a little bit split in his uh, attacking abilities were like the uh, Demon Hunter was attacking the DK and some of Sheik's army and the other part of the army was attacking Kolbas. So unlike earlier, rather than focusing one at a time, push one back and then the other, it was a little bit split. So maybe yes, getting a little bit tired and hungry and uh, needing a cup of tea and a biscuit. Yeah, I can feel that, dude. I could need all of that immediately. I, I can prepare that. I've got a protein bar here and a <laughs> big bottle of juice, so I'm good. <laughs> Although I've not really elected to eat it quite yet, using it as a ration until, you know, the hunger kicks in. I don't really want to be raffling some packaging on the stream either, so... <laughs> you can do that, dude. No, don't worry. Or just mute yourself <laughs> for a little bit. But we are at the maybe halftime mark at the moment, so maybe save it for later. Yeah, Might be the better fine. idea. Yeah, I forgot the popcorn tonight. <laughs> so, a little bit disappointed. Yeah, and she just has done a very good job this entire game in always not looking too strong or too much of a threat. Like, Cole was looking very strong with his hero levels. Dice now in the past looked strong with his scary Chimera army. But she was never too scary to them to fight, but... Luckily, or good for us, is that Dice is now piecing with Cope and Sheik is using that to go for an, another attack, and this time bringing his full 80 supply army. And we'll see how this is going now. Yep, here comes the Necromancers. Let's see how well they did this late, but they are left behind. Sheik just realized it now, recruiting them forward. Always the problem. Um... These guys are pretty slow, they're not in range of the DK, and Dice, if he saw this, he has some time to prepare. He's far away from 100, but he only is down to 3k, so do you want to invest into fairies now? Yeah, Plus I think you? there's zero chance you should uh, make an army now, like, you are very dependent on your, on the third player that is Kolb here, and that he's gonna help you, and save the 3k gold for the base race. So Kolbas asking if he uh, can go and take a Terra Flu, which I believe is probably like a cold and flu treatment. And Dice just saying I'm dying. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> sounds the game. <laughs> exactly sounds a little bit more severe than just a cold. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Dice showing uh, good use in chat. And here's another fight between no Necros and uh, Dice. Kolbas is scared this year. The, the fairy is in a fine position. Getting the Breath of Fire out. Needs Shockwaves, maybe? DK out of that fight immediately. And uh, that's lots of damage down oh, now in the back now. And Sheik is losing 20 food. Wow. Yeah, yeah. The, the Shockwave from TC just essentially annihilated. And then that Fairy, fairy Dragon's Fairy Fire uh, just finished the castle. So off there. I didn't yeah, actually no, know. So here, here's a fun fact for you. Uh, probably you guys already didn't know, but Fairy Fire... Uh, it's got an AoE attack then. Pretty good against Necromancers. Looking yeah. good. Wow. A player's forces are under attack. But that was an ulti drained. Was it two ulti drained? I guess so. But with this uh. massive AoE, I don't know if these Necros do too much. I mean. He can send them across, but this map is so big that they will just expire. Yeah, I think probably uh, Sheik was in hopes that Kolbas wasn't going to uh, be in the right place at the wrong time, but uh, Kolbas wandering up and the shockwave done the dealing blow to a lot of the uh, Necromancers on the way out. Okay, next combined attack without Necros now. Just heroes with Death and Decay 
and Shockwave needs a bit of coordinating. But of course, Kolbas is thirsting for another transmute, as always. And Sheik, everyone has gold issues. Yeah, yeah. You had too much of that, or what's your issue with gold, Sheik? <laughs> nice one. And yeah, you can see Sheik really doing a good job here in misleading Kolb and thinking that he um, needs help against Dice. When in reality, it's the absolute different, but difference, but the absolute opposite. But it doesn't look like Dice is dying right here, right now. A lot of Moon World still. Sheik, the commander, needs the storms, needs the hexes against the zero combo. Bears are falling, that takes a little bit of uh, regeneration out of this fight, and of course, roar out of this fight. <laughs> this is the game with the most anime dead I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's overwhelming, man. I, I can't believe my eyes. I've seen this <laughs> being casted so many times in this game. Such a strong ultimate needs <laughs> to be addressed in future uh, patches. DK, once again, running wild with this ultimate, so yeah. Needs, uh, <laughs> needs nerfed. Nerf yeah. kill. This uh, initiate bear almost killed the mountain giant, so definitely respectable. They are staying a little longer, but they didn't kill a single building, did they? No, but what? As uh, Lich has got invo, should be saved. Passes it. Passes TP. Still, still a bit I scary. Breath. Uh, oh. uh, breath of fire, yep. Yeah. Oopsie, Sheik. I mean, he can recover, of course, uh, but that's expensive. Yeah, a little bit unnecessary loss there. Could have passed the TP, but a little too greedy trying to run away. Never really seen the 75 mana from the uh, Panda and ate that breath of fire. But you know what the uh, good thing about that fight was, is all fiends are now gone. True, we don't have to hear them anymore, as we uh, were hoping for. So Sheik, just a man of the people. Nope, it's like, a, it's like a broken mirror though, so now when I play and I use fiends, I'm going to hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, TC under a little bit of a, a beat down here with Mountain Giant and uh, Demon Hunter and Panda. That's ultimate. We'll be acted here. What? Shockwave against heroes doesn't do absolutely anything. But he's the only hero without a TP, so yeah, now he has to TP out with another hero, but it will it be in time? Oh, yes. uh, oh, TC being a tanky boy survives that little beat down a little bit longer enough to get the TP out. Yeah, over saying they welcome both of them a little bit too long here. Almost losing the TC, uh, Sheik losing a Lich. Sloppy boys. Yeah, boy, I was going to say the same here as the chat. <laughs> like, it starts out with people calling like, I lost 80 supply, then it's like I lost 50 supply, and now we're at the point where we say, I almost lost one hero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, what does that tell you, that she, uh, Dice has done a great job in beating down your heroes, or uh, you never lost it, so there's not really any gold lost in that. But yep. uh, Sheik back up to 93 supply here. Making Ooh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I guess he's going to hide that, hides that, right? Because it would only make sense to not hide it if he thinks he can push through a 1 versus 2. Yeah, uh, Sheik not really in that position quite yet. And of course, Alchemist, uh, any units are free gold. So Dice bringing the war to actually uh, Sheik here. Alright, let's see how he does. We need some undead buildings to be gone, as much as that hurts me. With Breath of Fire, that's doable-ish, but without army, kinda hard. Kolbas is coming in, but on whose side is he on? Yeah, that's doing a good job now, not building any more army. But he doesn't even have the money for a hidden army anymore, really. So that's gonna hurt him a little bit in the uh, even later stages of the game. But pretty much the same is true for Kolbas. So Sheik, the only one they need to be very oh. careful. Oh. As he already built his hidden army. Ghost the Fiends are back! 
Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I've seen this. Uh, PTSD is swiftly arriving right now. Um, I'm, thank God they died. Uh, right, okay, back to the fight. <laughs> All right, the wagons are falling rather quickly out of the natural habitat of the base where they just uh, form corpses. Dreadlord under fire, <laughs> DH under Good fire. And oh! See. Where did that coil go? Well, it hit the uh, demon hunter, I think. Oh, and now some animosity between Sheik and Kalvas for the cell. Yeah, he sold a spider that was that was uh, from Animated Dead. I never knew that happened, nor did I know uh, that existed. Does that give gold, though? No. Yeah, what? Yes? Oh, yeah, he says it. What the? What? So, you see, telling you all along, Animated Dead. So strong. <laughs> it's showing okay, it's, it's, it's worse. I really didn't know that. At least before they were in the, uh, so they couldn't be sold, but yep. now, of course, free gold. Yep. Still, so many towers for Sheik. Defensive position should be fine. Yeah, the rune brace is really nice here for the demon hunter. Yep, the HP barely actually moved. As a true undead, he's trying to solve with hero focus a little bit. <laughs> it's not just undead that do this, you know. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, of course, hero focus on the demon hunter is probably going to go to a little bit of waste with rune bracers there. Yeah, necromancers from Sheik Questionable never really worked out. Just eight breath of fires and shockwaves and yeah. essentially wasting gold. Now Sheik is down to 8k, so it is getting expensive. A little bit of repair as well. Panda has no mana though. That's a bit of an issue. Trian's still providing free damage and all the towers should be able to hold this, but slowly but steady, undead base getting decimated. Yeah, it brings a tear to my But Colbass is moving uh, south, so in hopes that he arrives in due course and uh, pushes Dice back away from this brittle base that is easily exposed and destroyed. Uh, tension is rising, also between the players. Every misstep might yeah. be punished now. Yeah, she is trying to get Colb on his side. And it seems to be working out. I mean, can't blame him too much. Look at this main base of dice. It's so huge. I don't even bother to count all the moon wells. And I can tell you, dude, the, the overlay of Blizzard, man, they can tell us 21. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's still a lot. So yeah, I wouldn't blame Korg if he would go on dice for a bit, but yeah. No real tool to scout the hidden army of Sheik. As there is no owl. So it's a good choice for Sheik to go for a hidden army. And I heard another transmute. Uh, yep. Storm versus Entangle as well. Can he entangle again? Yeah, yep. should be forcing an, uh, an invuln here. Oh, he'll wait first, wants to keep that item at all costs. Oh, and it's working for now. Shadow Hunter comes back. Very little yeah, mana on him. Much mana for those, so I don't think that it's gonna work out to save an item. Mm -hmm. TC still has ult, but triggered now. Oh, oh the keeper though is in range. Well, at least one invuln was used, just the wrong hero I chose, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be a curse. Every Kobas uh, hanging in there saves the invuln, and one hero has to use it in the next, so... A town is under forces are under attack. Yeah, still so much moon juice, still so much base here for uh, dice. It's probably, probably best if the uh, Kobas and Sheik... Whittle that base down a little bit, at least 
taking some Moonwells away, but very difficult, especially with the three heroes here under the safety of the Moonwell, so... And Daesh has been very good here with the uh, As Soon As Death and Decay cast, being great with the uh, Entangle. Of course, Shredlord there to sleep, however... Yeah, that's a little bit of an issue, like everybody has good potential at least to to kill a base, uh, but everybody also has a disable. Nobody really has the strongest combo for, for a hero arena, um, like a blade master would provide, of course, and nobody really wants to bring the army, thanks to the alchemist and all that AoE. Tricky situation where everybody negates the other. Yeah, offers a very weird dynamic. Superman here, the rescue. Uh, is trying to fight his way back out here, but Keeper should be arriving in with a staff and is actually coming in from the north here. Keeper instead fights his way instead, though. Uh, not Keeper, Demon Hunter. Two ultimates used. Dreadlord in trouble, Tranquility. Is he fighting that metamorphosis? Looks like it. Dreadlord also in problems, thanks to the Cyclone. Entangle! And the Dreadlord dies again! Sheik is continuing to lose heroes. Yeah. Demon Hunter or Superman form, so scary, usually run away from it and Lich transferred the TP and TP's out, saving the Lich, but DK also saved. Yeah, the Sleep Dice is doing a great job, he had one uh, Dryad on the field there, doing a great job just uh, quickly uh, dispelling the Sleep, so Keeper would be able to entangle if the and DK was used on his base anyway. And Sheik pumping from one crypt here, uh, a few guards queued. Huh. Did... Yeah, I... nice little detail to pump the guards from one crypt and from four or five, because yeah, if we would have, then it would already have been scouted by dice here that four crypts are producing and like that, he is not even aware of one crypt. Well, that next breath of fire against the, against the towers. This is going to be damn fine. Quad kill for yep. dice, making things a lot easier. And I think honestly it's the best thing that can happen to Sheik to lose his main base now, because then it's just 100% obvious what will happen next, which is killing dice's main base, and then Sheik suddenly has 100 supply to fully finish and not go for another balancing round. So I think Sheik actually wants to lose his main base here. Or at least most of it, just to make 100% sure that the aggression is going to go uh, on dice. Nice. Yeah, that's Mountain Giant, man. If this gets staffed away and saved again, I, I, I can't understand, because I'm sure this may be the same Mountain Giant that has lived under about four attacks. Uh, yep, saved once go. again. This Mountain Giant has a saving grace or something. I'm sure it's the same one that just does not want to die. And he likes to bath and all these moon juice. Not using it right now, but we'll definitely do it later. All right, next hero arena in the middle. Frenzy, Chemical Rage, Alchemist. Well, that would be something. <laughs> Casting Frenzy on your uh, opponent's Alchemist. Yeah. Interesting choice. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, let the damage dealer do the, da deal the damage, right? Boom. That sounds very logical. I like. Yeah. Oh, Kobos with a little bit of a backstep goes into the heroes now. Again, Metamorph is ready. What the hell? We just, we've just seen it. But same goes for Infernal. Here we go. Split on the panda. Everything <laughs> healthy. Yes. SH. Oh, everything is hurt. So tempted here. The question is, will she can uh, nuke that elk? Oh. Wow, level 10 Demon Hunter. Kolba's about to lose two heroes here in desperate need of mana. The Panda is Invis. Oh, 50 crit. Oh boy, that's Ooh. so close. He's still Invis. Yeah. It's not enough though. The Demon Hunter can't reach because he was purged. Mana burn. This <laughs> is not enough. Wow, look at this place here. <laughs> Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> yeah.
He has Jeez. Edges here. Yeah, that's right. Koba getting out by the skin of his teeth. Two heroes just about to drop. TP arrives just in time. And uh, I guess thanks, Sheik, for the little opening for his uh, great hole to sit in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so it came in handy after all. Sheik. Eternity supply, not yet pumping more guards from that uh, hidden crypt at the back. <clears throat> And Dice essentially uh, used up the majority of his moon juice, actually. So, slowly but surely, given an opening for this uh, base to be attacked over time. But it's costly, though, for uh, for Sheik and Kolbas, who have to keep TPing away. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's nighttime right. now. Yeah, nighttime just started, so that's amazing for Dice here once again. So, yeah, as long as Sheik is not bringing his army, they will have a hard time here in... Uh, fighting dies efficiently, even two versus one. And yeah, if Sheik is starting to bring his army, on the other hand, they will realize that he is not broke at all, and maybe he is the biggest threat. And also, Sheik doesn't like to face the level ten alchemist with his worms. No, of course not. I mean, is that not three hundred and eighty-five gold every uh, worm? <laughs> that's yeah. And alchemist's time for the transmute is only sixty seconds killed, I believe. 45. 45? <laughs> yep. Yep. And you said we should buff it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but Oh! Nukes yep, the Keeper! All right! Like now we're two. talking. And yeah, again, Demon Hunter slept, so no more staff because the panda prefers to carry something else. Ooh, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, no TP either, just an invo potion. Now the panda are fighting a little bit of a mischance. Yeah, that was exactly not the position where Dice wanted to fight it. And now he has to use more moon juice and is on two heroes. So yeah, he is trying to get a stop. But yeah, they are not finished for sure because they didn't achieve anything they wanted, which is weakening the space. Yep, let's slow fastly shut down with the death and decay by the uh, cyclone for the mummy panda there uh, but the base is under a little bit of threat and I, my eyes must be deceiving myself because the uh, minwells are back to almost full again <laughs> that's what happens during nighttime. you close your eyes for a second boom and they can heal you again metamorph also ready for the third time in no time panda ultimate there and do you really want to take on two ultimates maybe in the absence of a keeper you can try Kobash just with loses. He's running away. Run. Oh, that's another TP, isn't it? Should be. Must be. It's again one of those scary situations. Yep. Panda's back. Drunken Haze, Breath of Fire. The TP's on the uh, Alchemist. The other two heroes are naked, so one may fall. Oh, Shadow. Wow. TC nice. Storm, saving Shadow. TP away. Wow, TC was exactly on 90 mana, I think. Ooh, Ooh, my, yeah, uh, they are not making progress. Was, yes, they was... kept the keeper, but only because he was caught off guard. But inside that space, they have not achieved anything, but only lost items. Yeah, Kobas playing with fire, literally with a uh, breath of fire. Holy moly, like, pushing it to the uh, brink of extinction here with the three heroes, actually TPing all on less than 100 HP, if I did not... Medivac here, yeah. arriving. <laughs> And uh, yeah, Solo Demon Hunter are chasing along the heroes of Sheik. Sheik now showing off a little bit of his uh, army here. Oh, Infernal. And Is there enough? Demon Hunter's naked. Doesn't have anything to say, but Panda runs in. Doesn't have the staff and Panda actually transfers to TP. <laughs> transfers. Drunken Haze Breath against Garks. Now he sees the real army. Now he knows what's up. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. But he hadn't the time yet to put it out there is a staff on the keeper so everything should yeah, be fine as you can see even this army is not really shining too much against such high level heroes but now he's to be careful okay wow the nova should have been there <laughs> shake is getting more and more frustrated 
yeah, Panda's Breath of Fire really does hurt on uh, Gargs, as so often demonstrated. Uh, but yeah, in that, in that uh, fight between Sheik and Dice, here, Dice actually ran up and transferred the TP over to the, uh, the Demon Hunter and transferred the staff over to the Panda, so the Panda now has the staff. That's a little problem, of course. Oh, Keeper, oh, keeper. has a town portal. Yeah. Okay. TP'd out. Uh, I still don't understand why he is on two staffs and not three. Like this is so. Yeah, but when he transferred the TP, when he transferred the TP from the panda to the demon hunter, he staffed the demon hunter away. The panda was essentially a sitting duck, but lucky enough, keeper came in with a staff and staffed the panda yeah, away. So yeah, but it's so much more complicated than it has to be. Like now, he even has an inventory slot free for the demon hunter to buy a staff. So please, 150 gold. It's so much value. <laughs> You never know, maybe Bashis and Dreams Day come true, so... But it doesn't look like his Demon Hunter is moving towards the shop, so maybe... Won't have the third staff. If I say this, right, I, I think if I say he isn't going to buy the third staff, then maybe he'll buy it. <laughs> That's my reasoning, so I'll say he won't buy it. I mean, you wanted the fiends to disappear, and they disappeared. So maybe you're <laughs> mind, you're mind controlling the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Like, buy the staff, dice. Buy the staff, please. <laughs> no, no, doesn't look like it. Nope, they're still going onto the night elf thanks to Moonwells. Yeah, Moonwells are actually finally drying up a little bit, but yeah, and due course, of course, they fill back up quite readily uh, in the night time, as so often seen. Pretty cool, that. Yeah, nighttime is coming in pretty soonish, so they should be fast. But I think this additional army for Sheik is going to help him a lot to turn this fight into their favor now. But yeah, there's still the alchemist always hungry for some transmutes. So if the fight goes too well for them, there will definitely be some cells. Yeah, and Sheik, uh, Sheik, before his Necromancer uh, transition had 15k gold, has really quickly burnt through that and is landing on just under 6,000 gold here. There was also three hero kills involved. Yep, that so cost a lot. Super, super inefficient here. All right, can we finally kill some buildings? It's time to cut the trees. But yeah, he's fighting against APs, he's fighting against Red Moonworld. Lord, Dread Lord. Lord. Uh, front, but okay. Can't get punished now by now. And yeah, this is actually some progress for first time. Yeah, both Kobas and Sheik coming in with the axe, trying to take them trees, but... Slow progress is better than no progress. Correcto, and Death and Decay looking good, far in the back, but it's another Panda Ultimate, it's another Cyclone, it's another Abandoned Death and Decay, but at least 50%, nice. And Sheik with his army still lurking for damage. N up until now, there is mana on the Orc, if mana is gone, he has to go as well. I'll focus on the Demon Hunter there, realizing that... A full blast from everything in his army, barely moved his HP, also has a staff, so maybe just focusing on the buildings rather than the heroes is the way to progress forward in this. How often can they do this though? Every bit of mana costs, especially on the orc side. And Dice did a great job keeping the heroes actually under control by mana burning each one that had a decent amount of mana there, so... Yeah, mm -hmm. very nice right here by Dice. And the worm could be a huge kill. Heal scroll. Oh, uh, it doesn't okay. help, does it? No, no. seven supply no. gone. Huge kill. A little bit of control gone as well. That MG gets nuked. And that's level nine on the Lich. All right, more progress, more mana for the Lich to work with. Yeah. I has to get some moon juice, but now, again, full mana. And this is one of the longest hero 
sieges that I've ever seen. Next yep. shockwave, but once again, it's only damage, no kills, or no destruction, really. And now TC is out of mana. Making a little bit of progress, so the majority of the moon wells at the front are now totally and utterly uh, almost empty. Well, my mistake is moon, uh, it's night time again, they are filling up very quickly. <laughs> right under the eyes, uh, they are filling up, so... Ooh, the frost worm. No mana for a coil. Ooh, survives barely. But TC now Alchemist. In trouble. Yep. Entangled. But there's a TP and an Invo Potion. Has to decide if he wants to stay a little longer. Ooh, right. Oh, Mana Burn! Oh, Alchemist ooh. level 10 dead! Was that the second where he typed the B? So he couldn't control anything. Oh, that's expensive and he's down to 1500. Oh, wow. Very, we are at three steps. Very costly mistake idle. indeed. Wait, 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 you s three days picked up the third staff? Why? Celebration. <laughs> wow, looking at the bank of dice, it's days where it is, pretty much. And for Kovas, it starts getting expensive. Buying these invuls, TPs, and now even having to revive the alchemist. Yeah, can't really be affording to lose any more heroes and TPs now. Otherwise, the item selling or the uh, unit selling may commence. But then again, Dice not really having any units. Essentially, all have been able to take the units off of uh, Sheik. <clears throat> but. Probably won't do that. Too risky. Aggro Sheik and end up getting himself uh, 2v1. So. Dice pod Ooh, he's pod finding the alchemists. Right inside Arta. Oh yeah, that's that's a really good thing for uh, Dice here. Denying the Alchemist coming back, at least until another altar is built. Dice doing a really great job, actually. Yeah, really, really good. Defending such attacks so many times. Um, and now yep. knowing yeah, when... On the map, right, because he has two staffs and... Uh, uh, Staff of Teleportation on the Panda, so he can just get back into his base in no time. And nothing to be scared of on the map except for six heroes, I guess. But they are not coordinated and that the sixth hero is not even out, not even the altar is built yet. He's putting his uh, full energy into managing the uh, issues happening on the map. No any more typing from him. Oh. Okay, that's some buildings going down thanks to Infernal and D and D. Yeah, but also now the army of Sheik taking some hits. Is he able to save everything? Looks like it. Breath should be coming breath, in. Not gonna kill. Okay, that was five moon worlds, I think. Good trade for Sheik. Yeah, interesting who's gonna get the high score in this game. Ooh, the Infernal sees the invul on the ground. Yep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> man. Nice. So unmattered. <laughs> Been safe for it any day, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, Infernal denying that <laughs> info. Now, you see, I said that Dice is using his full. Uh, full attention on managing the situation and now he starts chatting. Can he convince Kolbas that, that they need to attack the undead base? Mm, Realize, wouldn't you agree that probably the teaming shouldn't stop yet on the Night Elf because the Night Elf still got so much more moon mills and Undead base is much easier for Dice and Colbass to break down a little bit yeah, versus the Net Elf, yeah. Yeah, I think it's even hard to judge from an Observer perspective, but I can't imagine playing this. Like, it's gonna be so difficult to... yeah, to know if anyone still has a bank in this game, if anyone has some hidden stuff. So yeah, uh, from the Observer point of view, I think it's fine to team more because the Undead is never going to be able to 
to fight teaming if it comes down to Dice losing his main base. So yeah, usually in FFA it's always fine <laughs> to kill an elf's main base and then go from there. Um, but yeah, with such high heroes I don't think that the Anik can build any army that's gonna uh, kill six heroes. So yeah, I would agree. Uh, yeah. Take Moonrose first. So the fight here happened between Dice and uh, Sheik. Dice having the second staff there allowed the Keeper not to actually be targeted and staffed them out just before he was ready to uh, get yet another Which Nova. Which could be but away in the meantime, getting sniped. Not bad. Fight Ooh, continues. The Keeper is not even here, so he's fighting with two heroes versus three and the Worm. And the Keeper could come here as a big surprise. Oh, he's coming in from the top. Oh. Okay. He's i gonna attack the Lich, who might be forced into an invul as the DK is out of mana. And the Keeper though, still marching forward, but now forcing the invul, okay? But that's only 150 gold, and in the meantime he lost his Tree of Eternity and also some APs plus Moonwells. So that's an expensive trade here for Dice, and... Yeah. Yeah, Kobas is a great opportunity here to actually raid the base of Dice, while Dice was uh, in amongst the fight with uh, Sheik here, but... Bast uh, quickly approaches back to his base to defend it, but the minion buildings are here. <laughs> yep, there are now even three casters in the mix. Feels like he needs them, but of course they die quite easily. He, wow, against the mana burn. Lots of damage. And now we have the same thing again as before. Um, Kolb is pretty much forced to use items here and also losing some units. And Sheik is not anywhere near, so that's gonna end up in another TP. And Dice not losing anything, but Moon will choose from here. Nope, the third staff coming much in handy there, allowing them to uh, staff each hero without too much worry about losing any now. So yeah, the third staff definitely was a great investment for Dice. Better late than never. Yeah, yep. picking up pace here. And of course it's a nice thing to point out that you lose the tier 3, like it sounds huge, but in reality it's pretty much, it doesn't matter at all. Whether it's a tier 3, a tier 1 or anything. Don't you want mana potions maybe? Ah, uh, with moon worlds probably not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> time and time again, Night Elves uh, <laughs> shown that moon worlds are much more stronger than ziggurats. Yeah, or farms. No, farms are the strongest. Everyone knows. Farms, yeah, let's go farms. <laughs> Hashtag fix Ooh, farms. But now a big death and decay once again, and the Inferno taking care of the fourth Moonwell. So he has to be quick, but already asleep in position. And yeah. Not gonna kill those Moonwells, but hurting them a lot, and the Inferno takes care of them. Uh... Thank you, but nice. Is Lelu playing for him now? No, don't <laughs> lag out after such a long time. Oh no, this, this is not good. Now. This is not good. Uh oh. No. Oh, not no. like I this. I have no idea what to do with a game like this. Thank God I'm no admin. Yeah. Uh, oh! oh, wow. A round of applause for Fluxu, who brought us the reconnect function yes. to War 3 Champions. Saving Warcraft 3 esports every single day. Yeah. Oh, got a little bit of sweat on the brow there. Really, it would be, it would be a unfair and unjust disconnect there. So, especially so late in the game there. Glad that Dicey's internet kicked back into action. He's back for the uh, remainder of the, the game. Problems on the panda though. Uh, staff him. Staff. Two no. seconds on the staff. But Ooh. wow, just in the range of the moon wells. But yeah, again, more and more moon wells falling. So it's. Yeah, Corvus has to be careful now to not over team here, as there are a lot of moon wells falling. A nice yeah, stomp landing actually disabling the heroes of, uh, of Dice or Dice's. Demon Hunter under a lot of threat here gets healed from the Moonwell. And very very high level micro saves his keeper as well. Keeper got staff back. Ooh, Demon Hunter still picking on the Alchemist. Yep, Alchemist forcing an invo. But while that little uh, skiffle's happening, Sheik is still picking apart some Moonwells in the top right of the base. 
and they want my attempt to burns here for Kolb, and in the end it's gonna be a, a TP anyways, is it? <laughs> now even the TZ receives, but yeah, six Moonwolves by now on this Infernal's kill list, and the Panda is back here, what's he doing? Oh, dead! Oh, nice. Wow, and Kolb managed to not lose anything, or not lose a TP. And yeah, now it's getting dangerous for Dice, I guess. And Tom's clicking the moon wells. Up to Superman and Keeper here to uh, to push him back. Okay. Yeah, luckily, the hero's out of mana now. 800 gold left. That's not too wow, much. The Keeper misses the Demon Hunter, level 3 evasion. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> hit him again. But yeah, what about the keeper? Needs to be staffed out. No more mana really for any spells, but right click damage doesn't help against the demon, might help against the keeper down the road. Demon oh, how much he would love to have a set here. I mean, he's yeah. in his ultimate, so it's fair. And Corp, you gotta be careful. There's already a hero dead. But yeah, they have so much trouble breaking dice. Even two versus one, so I can understand that Kolb is still trying to get a little bit more done before piecing. Yeah, with the panda gone, this is of course an opportunity now. Yeah, and also pretty risky, I think, for Sheik to stay in this fight with three red red heroes. Ah, with unholy aura, should be fine. <gasps> Entangle, yep. Alchemist. Yep. What oh, is he TP doing? Boy. He had a TP on him, he typed and said the TP in Again. the second time. Yeah, back to back, dude. Oh, no. Oh, cold bass, man. That's so expensive. And yeah, the now our juice, totally. Finally, a our little empty. Keep up. Staff. Staff the way. But killed wow, by maybe Cole is a little bit angry now. But I mean, it's totally his his mistake. He typed "cop," but okay, now he goes back. Oh, the keeper actually died. I thought he staffed. All right. Yeah, he staffed to Cop and Cop killed, and then said, "Now we are even." Ah. Yeah, staff. Uh, yeah, even it doesn't cool. mean that you should pull back, Cop. <laughs> Man, they are not allowed to lose any heroes anymore. Cope at 500, okay, so Dice at 1200. The Wisp. Wisp is gonna rebuild the altar. And yeah. No Moonwells is now the big thing. And it's also the factor where they are forced to peace. And they are doing so. We have another open game. Yeah. I mean, this is a big world. <laughs> Sheik now definitely in the big lead. I was uh, going to say at one point, I feel like the slight, there was a slight bit over teaming here uh, and uh, Kobas should have turned on Sheik a little bit earlier, but yeah, has forced Sheik back now and uh, yeah, Dice is building all on the right hand side, should see his panda and his keeper come back sometime soon, but really under a lot of pressure with a uh, little gold left and yeah, now... And Dice is calling it correctly. If he's 100 supply, then they are dead. And yeah, it's exactly the case that Sheik is 100 supply. And now it's the best time to reveal his hidden army, going with everything. He knows that three heroes are dead at the moment. So yeah, it's a bad situation here with the half HP DK and not so much mana on, the, on your heroes. But it's the best point in time where you can catch some uh, players of guard, some heroes. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Also against Alchemist, you either bring your entire army or nothing. And yeah, now the Zeppelin scouts the 100 supply. That's nice for them, because Kolb is now going to call it out, exactly. And the altar has been cancelled, as I see. So new altar is coming up, but the Infernal is running straight into that direction. So again, Dice will remain on one hero, and that's what I said, Sheik. Even with 100 supply, would have big troubles against six heroes, but against three to four heroes it's definitely way easier to survive but on the other hand it's a big map so a lot of time for them to get back to heroes coordinate and yeah maybe tear tear cheek apart uh, little by little 
Yeah, I found it a little peculiar that Sheik moved over to Kolbass's base instead of uh, re remaining uh, on Dice and weakening him further because Dice, of course, have not only the Demon Hunter as under very little ability here to actually defend against Sheik's army. Yeah, and the Infernal even getting some more work done. I think another one or two Moonwells killed by the Infernal. So down to two Moonwells, which is not making him getting him supplied. Uh, stuck, but the Infernal didn't scout the altar, so Panda is getting revived already. And I think th there's still a good chance for them to defend versus Sheik, because there's a lot of time for Dice to get back to heroes, and yeah, Al Alchemist over time against those Chimeras will have a great time. And now Kolb is bringing 10 10 10 heroes with his caster uh, straight into Sheik's main base, so this is again a big, um, yeah, slow down. And yeah, in Friends Mute, that will definitely be a liking of Kolb. Trades a TP for a Friends Mute. Ooh, but now some casters. But nice TP timing. Big picking the right people to pick on there, takes away a walker, and uh, we can see ourselves as a just TP away. Almost uh, claiming quite a lot of Kolbassi's remaining army. And yeah, looking a little bit uh, tough for both uh, for, for Kolbass at the moment. Sheik yeah, getting yeah. a little bit of space is, is simultaneously uh, making his keeper and this panda at the same time with the right hand and left hand side uh, mm -hmm. yeah, altars. Yeah. Very smart idea, yeah, and no much waiting time for both to come out rather than waiting for one after the other. Yeah, and I think Sheik is going to run out of steam pretty quickly. Like, as soon as they coordinate up with six heroes, there is nothing that Sheik is going to be able to do against it. I think even already against these three heroes of Kolb, it's going to be a little bit of a hard time. But yeah, I wouldn't engage if I was Kolb. So it's smart to run here. And yeah, the plan of Sheik was to eliminate Kolb so that he has a 1v1 versus Dice. But yeah, Kolb is split very nice. So yeah. yeah Kolbass is in a great, uh, great uh, job here, keeping Sheik a bit distracted while Dice recovers and both can then team up on Sheik and Sheik. Ooh, and another transmute here into the Gargs. Rough. So yeah, the one versus two rod is not gonna work out for Sheik here, I think. So I don't think he will spend any more on army. That being said, he's pumping an additional worm in his main base. Uh, where Dice already is with two heroes. Keeper on his way. Yep, collecting the little bit of moon juice that's left over before Keeper arrives to the fight here. <laughs> cool, yeah, of course, moon, moon is also playing a part uh, again, even though there's two only left over, but... Uh, well, I think there's more, actually. Uh... Yeah, and I really like the inventory of yeah. Dice now. Like, he has boots on every hero, staff on every hero, and, e and even a telly staff on every hero. So, yeah, the focus on the heroes as it should be. But now getting chased by Sheik, but he's aware that Sheik has 100, so he's not going to engage. Rather waits for Kolb, and Kolb, yeah, will collect some gold. Has to be careful to not lose the Alchemist. And wow, the hidden Great Hall was already cancelled, so top right is the last Great Hall for Kolb at the moment. Safe from Sheik, but not safe from Dice for later. Yep, both uh, neighbors now in the top right. Transmute goes for the destroyer, which is also an interesting choice. So no dispel against the hex or against uh, entangle. But the shadow hunter doesn't have an inbul. Ooh, no. big, big weak spot in this army. Oh no! So close. Can't oh. save him. Another no. hero kill against Kolb. And now his casters Ooh. are completely falling apart without any just healing. Throw, just throw by Dice, so Dice sees it and is rushing to him and there is no great hole upkeep in mind, so the Alchemist can't use the TP. Oh, oh my god! Well, pretty much saved here by the sleep, but I guess Sheik doesn't know that there is no great hole up, so... He wants to nuke it. Oh! 10-10-10, ten, ten, ten. undead heroes, here we go! Oh wow, what a game, what a game. Only one hero that's not level 10. 
Crow dead, Worm gone. This is some losses for Sheik as well, yeah, going for the Keeper he's now. Dude, <laughs> yeah, this third staff, so important, we see it again. Sleeping yep. one here, enough anymore. But yeah, Sheik losing more and more here. Another Worm on the menu, can't be saved. Yeah, for some reason, the Orb of Lightning has a 100% proc rate versus undead air <laughs> units. <laughs> so, of course, it purchase. Oh, yeah, 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 I've seen that many times. Blade Master, <laughs> just if, if I have a unit nearby him that flies, yeah, it's not getting away, like, so. <laughs> just, I'm not oh, saying yeah, anything. Suddenly, suddenly we have sheep oh, on 600 touch. gold and 60 supply. This is not something that can win you the game. Dice just uh, TP'd or, or staff TP'd into the uh, right hand side altar and uh, she caught it just in time and dodged the breath of fire, almost resulting in them losing the majority of the Gargs. So, very good uh, awareness by Sheik taking care of the Gargs like it's his firstborn child. Wow, and Sheik is still continuing to produce a Frostworm, so he is now on 21 gold. He's selling his main base. Ooh, this is gonna be a very interesting endgame now. This is way, uh, worth all the wait for sure. It's uh, one of the longer FFAs, three hours and counting, but things are about to be decided soon. Coming in onto Sheik, going onto the Keeper, who has no TP, but staff out from the Panda, exposing him a little bit. Dreadlord 50%, getting the coil, that's fine. Panda, no mana for split. Yeah, and Sheik has to fight exactly right now when the Alchemist is not here. Staff comes through just in time. The Demon Hunter waking up just enough time to staff the uh, Panda out. Panda back into the little bit of base he's left over. But as actually running back doing south to hopefully well, collect... Has to be careful though now. But uh, uh, off lightning against Undead Air. <laughs> <laughs> here yeah, we yeah, go, you as I here. said. It's just as I said. Uh, so yeah. obviously... Lots of moon welts are down, so Ooh, the heroes of dice. No, but dice is of course very good in his mana burns. So always. Wow! Nice. Ooh. Oh, cheer on the panda. Yeah. This yep, coil. That was definitely game changing, and now tranquility without moon will choose, of course, also worth so much. But uh, Sheik, in the meantime, has been using his gargs to essentially eliminate the remaining bits of base that he's finding with him. So very good. Uh... He's desperately trying to find that altar, but Alchemist already out, and that's rip for the Frostworm. Yeah. As soon as he's gonna arrive. Uh, maybe he kills him earlier. Boom! There we go. Towards dice. He brings the statues, but they don't stand a chance here. Cheek is running out of stuff. Yeah, totally. And it's not getting better from here as the Alchemist is now back and the Shadow Hunter should be revived at least in a second. 506 gold. I guess he has to sell something, which is not going to be a problem yet. So, yes, selling something. Shadow Hunter getting revived. 10, 10, 10. Will we see 9 level 10 heroes? I would be so excited. Nine, level 9 and a half keeper. And this is one of the most exciting bits about FFA. If it goes long enough, the uh, high heal levels are super cool. This is Warcraft, how it's meant to be played. They catch the Gargs, stone form, all right, but one was sold. Trigger. Yeah, everything is so expensive now. And of course, if you sell something, you get the gold for it, which is so much worth now. Like you can get invo potions. And Sheik, I think, has to start chatting in a second again. Like. He will realize that this one versus two attempt failed and the hidden army is now gone. So there's no surprise element for any of those players, which yeah, can result in a very nice base race. If we have just a second, a little thank you to Buttcrumbs for two gifted subs, also to Junior Torre for five months, Steven Unger for six months, and Dink for ten months. I thank the players for pausing a little bit so I can shout out my supporters. Um, yeah, where is this going now? Like, Sheik has a little bit of gold. Everybody has a little bit of gold. Plus, of course, uh, Transmute. 
Yeah, puts uh, she in a very precarious situation. Cannot actually bring any more army out with that alchemist on the field. It's just essentially feeding gold to uh, Colbass. And yeah, the uh, Shadowhunter is soon to be back on the plain field as well, which is not a good time for Sheik. A little bit premature in this uh, army uh, surprise army attack. And really, I think the mistake there wasn't the fact that he, he continued on Dice when Dice was weak, was splitting Colbast in a great job and uh, distracting Sheik and allowing Dice to bring his heroes back. And now the favour's been repaid. Now Colbast is in a position with all his heroes back as well. So I think that little split and little uh, indecisiveness has really put Sheik in a bad, problematic position in the game. Yeah, I couldn't say it any better. Lots of trees still in the main, of course, but can slowly rattle it down if he doesn't have to use the Infernal in a fight. Garks are annoying, but can, I guess, be countered by Panda and especially Alchemist. Yeah, Garks uh, disintegrating under Panda. Breath of Fire, so strong, man. There we go. Uh, yeah, but Sheik doing a great job in keeping a, a very particularly close eye on the Gargs, but they are flying past a little hidden peon here. Oh yeah, they're finding the peon. That's finding big. one peon, but there's uh, another gap in the trees where it's, I'm not sure who <laughs> put it there. But the peon's uh, enjoying this time on a little island. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's another transmute here. Oh, he messed it up. No, okay, there's even a better one. Zeppelin plus uh, Acolyte. Stone form hiding the. Uh, I don't think he'll have a vision because of the tree lines, so Stone form hides the Gargs <laughs> away from any further transmute or uh, acid bomb. Yeah, we reached a time where every gold coin is very important and you have to really think about how you want to spend it. Yeah, I mean, all players now down to the last pennies. Uh, but she still done a great job with these uh, gargoyles moving around the map and taking as much buildings as they can do. <laughs> Again, uh, nice way of spelling come. Shout out to that. No, oh, the alchemist <laughs> rushing here again. Yep. Oh, Not a catch. What happens if you use stone form while the transmute gold sack is in the air? Um, what? There was one thing you can do, I think. I mean, you if can you stab, stone obviously, form, but. You stone form over the forest so that the gark gets replaced while the transmute is gonna hit them, you dodge it. But if you just stone form it on open field, it's, it's still getting transmuted. Ah, okay. But it, the gark needs to be, needs to get replaced somehow over the terrain for it to miss. Many unanswered questions from the 1v1 scene is answered in the <laughs> FFA because there's so many niche set, like settings have already been done in the FFA, so like this, you know, stone form over a tree, you've never known that to stop transmute either. I thought it was only staff that could stop this. All right, and that's going to be it for Sheik. Like, not the game, but any chances of beating them. Yeah, six heroes arriving to the undead base, and <laughs> and the Sheik summoning forth the uh, undead creatures with. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's at least the Seas Cloud applied. <laughs> yeah, but he sold that again. Alchemist getting Insane. the cell on the animated dead. Ah, we, yeah, true. We, we learned what that the today. Hell, we learned so much today. But yeah, what can Sheik do now? <laughs> <laughs> So Garks, the Garks were attacking the altar, so pretty much peace has been applied. Wow, that shockwave free, cigarettes down. So hey. yeah, I think Big should have just sold his main base rather than losing it now. It would be better for his bank account. And what's gonna happen now? Pretty much no one knows how to, who to trust and who to attack, I think. Yeah. So for now, the safest that is to kill more of Sheik's units, but it can shift very quickly here. So yeah, Dice 
definitely is not trusting anyone here. Rather be careful here in the back. He could also be the one backstabbing, but I wouldn't advise. And Cheek is going again on Dice's altar, of course, as Dice was continuing on him. So yeah, now same play again. Peace versus peace. And now Corp also has to go back because the other two peace, so he might be next, but then on the other hand they can't attack him because they need him. Oba is a very honest FFA player. I actually just said that he only has one ball and left, and he's not lying. I was I was having to reread that and uh you know check my eyesight and he's correct. He's only got the one building at the top right, which is a great hall, but he has got a peon on the map somewhere. I think it was on the islands. Nope, that has gone. Little peon here, one zeppelin left over, and that is uh the last two buildings that he's got so far. Yeah, the alchemist definitely gave him a lot of gold to rebuild, and now we listen the zeppelin. Who gets slapped, uh, but now the destroyer is not safe, and that's another 300 gold. Uh, but again, same as so often in this game, the Shadow Hunter under fire, but TP trends were very nicely no sleep on the TP carrier. So Shadow Hunter survives and everything gets out. That was super nice turn of events for Cope here. Achieved a lot, gained some gold, and only lost the TP. But now it's stuck, <laughs> it's so often. <laughs> stuck Wait, what? Oh no! Wait, he can't get out. He can get out, can he not? Uh, Zeppelin on the way. Alright. But yeah, down to two buildings. Wow, Kobas showing the uh, transmute ability in a good light here. Uh, went from having no gold to continually having more gold than anyone else. Jeez, very strong ability. And like I said in the earlier, the, in the later game, comes in handy, especially when you are really struggling with the gold and selling your opponent's units is always great because one less, uh, one less army composition unit and uh, one more coin in your pocket. No mistakes allowed anymore. Sheik also stopped playing with the Garks. Yeah, it's very easily being eliminated here, but I don't think Sheik wants to eliminate Cole because Sheik can't win straight up against Dice, Dice's heroes, and also it's a pain to find Knight Elf Trees in the base race situation, so I think he wants to avoid that at all costs, which means that they need to kill more of the Elf, I would say, is the next yeah. play. Oh, Garks are on the move again. But yeah, for now it's a lot about getting all that scouting information that we as observers already have. They need to know exactly, is there still something hidden? How many workers are there? How many zeppelins are there? And it's very hard to do so, especially for Kolb, who has pretty much only one zeppelin that he can't use for scouting too much. And yeah, Garg's finding another peon, kill them. Uh, but also for the others it's not too easy because there's always the danger of running into an alchemist with something like a zeppelin with something like gags or a workers so yeah everyone has their win condition but it's tricky to get there and now there is a tp staff on the alchemist but that's a trap once more come on it's called was usually a human player <laughs> a player's forces are under just oh, just yeah. asking questions, you know? I wonder why. Is that because of the base layer? Oh, oh wow, oh, here they separated the EGs. Hey, look at this. Opening up the trees. <laughs> so Dice and, uh, and Sheik and Dice and Kobas are at peace with each other. So leaving Sheik to try and Ooh, eliminate the can... oh, Alchemist. Yeah, Ooh, that's the there. wrong way, my friends. What the Oops. fuck? Whoops! He wants that peon at all costs. The peon is also in the wrong direction. So yeah. Painful. That was expensive. Yeah, kinda, but more for Sheik again, I think, because there was a transmute and it's only one Zeppelin. Yeah, 
also and another gark falling to the acid bomb no wow last second <laughs> so that's two for six gargs yeah she can have very uh difficult possession here even having a destroyer this will be sold at one point which means any hexed uh unit won't be able to be dispelled and hex stomp drastically looks much more stronger so in a position where an either versing coal bass or dice 1v1 hero arena looks much more heavy duty tasks than one may think Yeah, and of course we don't have the big army anymore. Mostly heroes, little bit of support. Whew, there's also not too much out on the map for Sheik, if he wants to hide. Yeah, he's only got the buildings built, I believe, that are in his main originally. A player's forces are he's not yet built on anywhere else, but has got a accolade on the right hand side and i don't know where the other one is actually in the zap ah right next to his base i see very hard to see in the water i'm killing the burrow Yeah, gotta be precise here in the late game. Yeah, the battle uh, is now down. So, it's uh, maybe telling the future. Yeah, not too much gold in the inventory of Sheik. Yeah, he sold a lot. Obas back down to only 132 gold, so stack the uh, a couple of items on his units, uh, units heroes, sorry, a couple of uh, potions on each shadow and on the alchemist, <clears throat> and is down to selling some unit, uh, some more items as well. Yep, and as I say that, of course, Obas lets it be known. But he has sold some items. I think dice should be favored in this game at the moment, right? Oh. Infernal Ooh, attacks the last, Great Hall? At the moment for Kolb. Yeah, He's... with such a strong alchemist, it should be able to easily deal with Infernal anyway. Yeah. Should he fly the Zeppelin somewhere else with the two peons? In case there's an attack on this Great Hall? Yeah, I would say so. Uh, south, uh, probably leading the way with his heroes, making sure it's safe. Uh, because that being scouted, of course, means a resummon of Infernal back up there. Puts it under a lot of uh, threat. But Kolbas has got enough gold now to make another Great Hall. And is moving far enough south when you say he should be moving south. So, yeah, he is now moving his uh, Zeppelin with the 2P on south. But unfortunately, the Gargs of uh, Sheik are moving north, so they may actually meet Ooh, in the middle. That could be costly. Yeah, Sheik still has Gargs. And the Gargs are doing the uh, Jenga dance all the way up. <laughs> Always wondered why that happens. Hmm, but he pulled back just before reaching the Zeppelin. Yeah, the Gargs are like two. I like to steal the scene from you, Neil. So, uh, two two ships at night passing. Not really passing quite yet, though. They're just <laughs> essentially waving just, at each other, but not seeing each other. Exactly. At at the moment, it's just two ships. <laughs> yeah, it's just they're somewhere. <laughs> But, yeah, very close to it. Ah, they're moving north again. Oh, but now the Zepp... Okay, one peon down. Yeah, but the Zeppelin holds the remaining two peons. And also, 
then Kobas doesn't really have the production without killing his two heroes to make any more peons. Yeah, you don't want to kill your two heroes. Uh, I don't know much about FFA, but that I know. I have seen it done in the past where to free up some supply, but usually when you've got much more of a bank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think Kobas at this point really could afford this, but... But could if he had the, if he had the Alchemist and kept reselling, but... Yeah, I think you should transfer the orb to the alchemists for now, just to make sure the infernal is not gonna reach the great hall, because the attack speed of course is way faster for the alchemist. Right, so it looks like their intentions are now to. Uh... I mean, dice would be in a great position here if they go full on chic. Uh, dice already scouted this great hall with a tree earlier that was placed next door. Oh, Ooh, but now the Gax hit no. the Zeppelin, so the escape oh. has now been cancelled. And. Kobas, oh, one peon. Is him back, at least the Alchemist. Transmutes, S bomb. Quite expensive. <gasps> nice. Peon height. Can he go again? Oh. oh. Loses a peon, last peon, last Bowden. Yeah, how much will Sheik lose for it? Oh, just again, one just bearing off. Just one guard. That's it. Yeah. And now he's supply blocked on three heroes. And that's always the worst feeling because now you have to kill two heroes. No, one hero. One hero, one hero. Yeah. Supply. So, yeah, yeah, I got it mistaken. Ella. One hero, not two. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> it's been a long, long, long <laughs> night on your caster debut, dude. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, I've been casting the, all the FML games and like it gives me a better appreciation and also just as a, on behalf of everybody who watches your games and your cast, just to thank you because, yeah, the more I cast, the more I realize how exhausting it actually is. Maybe you're not playing the game and whatever, but it's pretty exhausting setting up, getting prepared, everything done. So yeah, uh, big ups for you for doing this over so many years and uh, still continuing to do so. You're keeping the Warcraft community much alive and putting a lot of uh, eyes onto the FFA community, which is really much appreciated. So just wanted to give you that little gesture of uh, goodwill and shout out. Oh, dude, thanks so much for the kind words. I mean, I wouldn't do this if the games aren't awesome. So the players have uh, have to do their part too. And if uh, people wouldn't watch, I couldn't do this either. So it's a uh, give and take and give and take and give and take, I guess, <laughs> from all parties involved. And man, these games are so awesome most of the time. I learned so much about Warcraft, and it's always something new, like... Oh, is she going for it? Sorry to interrupt, but this is, what is the last feeling of cold, and this could be it for him, and yeah, it definitely is an all-in on this. And I'm not sure if that's the best decision. Like, if it was Dice who goes for it, I would understand, but for Sheik, it's super risky. Yeah, but unfortunately, Kobas bites the dust with that last building, uh, and it's, you know, but... Now she's got to deal with having only three buildings. I don't know if he lost his acolyte because I don't see... No, no, he's still got three acolytes somewhere. I know that he had the Zeppelin off the left-hand side of his base. Um, but now has to deal with a tricky night off that is great at hiding buildings. As we can see, the, some of the trees are actually hidden in the tree line. So yeah, it's going to be a little game of whack-a-mole for uh, Sheik, but instead... Well, this could be the... Deciding fight nicely transferred the rune braces onto the keeper, so he is a little bit more tanky. But yeah, he's still not tanky at all. Out of the fight, but now what? A town is under siege. Did Tranquility do oh no, it was the dispel of the panda, right? That dispelled the blight. Yeah. Ah, should okay. Dice go for the fight or should he just go for the base race? Is the question. Always carry to go for the base race against Cheek, and Cheek already knew about the tree here, so. Gax taking care of that. Oof, this is gonna be a close one in this round. Ooh, not possible because the destroyer is built in time. And yeah, this is now a little bit tricky for Dice, but keep in mind there is still the Demon Hunter with mana burn and Undead Heroes are running out of mana slowly but surely. Panda needs to get a staff soon, but Demon Hunter comes back. Whoa. Sleep on him. Getting oh, caught. Keep There's keep no staff keep, out. Keep oh, doing. Panda comes back. Oh no! Oh no, Dice! Another stab! There's of course no moon juice anymore! Panda Not trouble! Panda oh, sleep again! Demon yeah, Hunter is still oh. asleep. Sheik turns into the Sandman and owns Dice in this fight. 
No way! Wow, so close before running out of mana. So wow. What's gonna do here now? Holy shit! Yeah, exactly. What do you do now? Yeah, he's supply blocked, so he is really on at most two heroes for now. As the guards took out the tree, and now Shift taking the altar. Perfect place here for Sheik, so he's managing this stressful situation very good. Eats wow. the shade, oh, and then. Wow, such a nice play here, eating the, sh the shade just to get enough mana. Dude, he yeah. knew all day long how to finish this game. So well prepared. Sheik is such yep. a maestro. Wow. I thought Dice was ahead in this endgame, but wow, Sheik, perfect execution. Like, this is the one fight you have to play perfect, and he totally did. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you guys. Boats again, of course, but I expected Dice to be favored in the last uh, little bit of the game, especially if Kobas was taken out. But Sheik, prevailing full mana hero, is showing how dangerous the uh, level 10, 10, 10 is. Just melting the panda and the uh, demon hunter. And turning the tables once again, Dice trying to remake a, a um, Moonwell here, but really has got enough gold to remake some of his heroes back, but. And a little bit of threat here with the Gargs and his main so far. Yeah, and Sheik has an um, Acolyte prepared, was of course. Close just before the Undead was running out of mana. And if Undead was out of mana, then yeah, this would go on into Dice's favor. Yeah, Sheik still has uh, three Acolytes, and I don't know. Uh, sitting at his base, maybe be a little bit more productive if he went out and tried to take a couple of buildings away since he has still got the ability to make an echo. Pause. Yeah, there's an echo on the right, so he should be fine. Treants dealt with. There's not even much that can attack these Gargs. And finds the Moonwell on the left, just getting more information. Finds the altar on the left, wonderful scout. And yeah, how do you get out of this, Dice? Ah, uh, man, Dice was playing it so well, very much prepared for the late game, very much prepared in general, looking like he was playing for the win and really sticking it in there and playing pretty well, using chat to his advantage, which, of course, I need to also review, review this replay and just double check that I have seen correctly because maybe it's someone else who's typing in Dice's behalf, but <laughs> <laughs> it was just. It's an incredible day for Warcraft history. That's another tree down soon. Uh, does he even have another one? No, that is the last one. And I guess only one Wisp. Infernal on the way to the upper left. Ooh, Garg saved as well. Like, is everything that Sheik is doing at the moment pretty much perfect? Yeah, and it needed to be, I think, in order to win this game. Incredible. How to have such a sharp mind after almost four hours of playing one single map is beyond me. Yeah, I guess just being aware of the importance of these last minutes and planning stuff out while we think the game is stale or yeah. no one is anything yeah that's exactly the point in time where people think about what is their win condition when are they going for the winning blow and that's now the really final winning blow and uh, one supply for dice i guess the keeper won't reach level 10. going for an yeah. ap rush here <laughs> well that's not gonna be too easy so now we are at zero supply Hail Mary attempt, maybe that that was the last buildings and no echo on the way, but of course we know she we is well prepared. We have the marching of the trees coming in from the right hand side though, so... But yeah, Sheik has also built a necropolis on the right hand side uh, at the old expansion point. Yeah, well aware, oh. does some damage already. AP... Yes, a lot. 
question of this game, who has the high score? I have actually no idea. I have no idea how that's calculated. One supply is down, zero supply, only the trees left. And it's just a matter of time. Will Dice type GG after chatting so much? Is that another... <laughs> is that another uh, new behavior of the kid? Yeah, let's see. Of oh. course oh. not. Cast or curse? <laughs> GG though. Sheik, what a master manipulator once again. Absolute yeah. tremendous Look late game. Look at the score, like top three, they are so close to each other and yes. Hope actually taking the high score. I think very deserved. Like he took those guys one by one, getting to 10 10 10 first. So, yeah, nice for him. Plus three points. Yeah, Kobas, uh, surprisingly, uh, shown the receipts of his knowledge of the years and really taking the boys to school at points and the fights. Very impressed with uh, how his micro was and very impressed with him standing up to the big boys such as Sheik and Dice and actually on many occasions, uh, quote-unquote, schooling them. Yeah, 100%. The fights in the early were insane by Kolbas. Shout out to him. Uh, great play by Dice as well, who is learning incredibly fast compared to the last game I yeah. saw from him in Team Battle Royale. Uh, but Sheik is still Sheik, dude. And in a late game, it's really hard to outmaneuver him. And once again, we saw that, like, really really cool and i can't help to feel a little sad for stein who was just bullied from the first second on so shout out to stein as well <laughs> yeah at one point i actually forgot stein was on the map uh, until <laughs> now <laughs> looking back and seeing him was he was a player in the, the match so but yeah stein unfortunately on the receiving end of uh dicey's early harass just left in the dust and unfortunately wasn't able to claim any grasp on the game and just yeah such an unfortunate event from wow three hours 43 minutes it didn't feel so long honestly you but... were gone for like 45 minutes ah maybe that's why <laughs> <laughs> yeah trip it uh, it definitely felt a long game to me so i uh i probably will like to have some uh just protein bar and feet up and maybe getting a pizza that nice, sounds nice. really good Eight man. level 10 heroes that sounds nice. Uh, so tomorrow I'm out of town, but I try my very, very best to be back on Wednesday if there's a game then. Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, um... We figure this out, and if there's a game and I have the time, then we put it on the homepage. But uh, I think one thing is pretty clear that is uh, that Ghost now has a standing invitation to come back as a co-caster. Because that was That's very, cool. very pleasant with you, my man. Man, I tried and I, I, I feel like actually looking back, uh, I, just, I don't feel like I performed as well as I'd like to and uh, at certain points maybe missed some key valuable aspects. But yeah, f especially when co cast me two valuable or invaluable uh, assets to the community, very difficult to compare myself to them because you guys are essentially OGs in this game at casting as well. And uh, yeah, I felt like uh, difficult to keep up, but I'm glad you... You approve it, Neil, honestly, and Realist and High Tech, you two, I do appreciate the opportunity from you both. And Neil, thank you very much for actually accepting me to help you out here, co casting. And yeah, I'd be happy enough to do it again at some point. My pleasure, man. Follow this guy on Twitch. If I'm not mistaken, it's Ghost GGGL. Yep, GGGL, paying homage to the uh, early uh, Warcraft Fro Frozen Throne Korean players that used to type either GGGL or uh, GLGD. That's a throwback. Nice to see that. And Rulas, I know you have a very, very busy real life at the moment. So thanks so much for your time uh, to join us here as well. You deserve that little time out in the middle. No problem about that. And um, is there anything you want to plug, maybe? Um, no, nothing pretty much. Like I, It was a pleasure to casting with you as always. And first time casting with Ghost, of course, was super fun. It feels like after four hours, I finally understand you well. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I can't wait for more casts uh, by you. If you want to follow FML, then yeah, definitely join the Discord, ffamasters.net. There is a Discord link and also twitch.tv slash ghost. GGGL. There we go. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Bye.
for your time, mm. everybody. See you soon. Oh, do you want to add something? No. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say that uh, every G, uh, every F FML game of the season I should be casting. So if you guys are interested in uh, checking out the FML series, uh, I will cast every game this season. So I just wanted to say that. So Neil, if you do come back on Wednesday to cast an FML, I'd be up for co-casting with you again. So nice. that's an extended offer. But uh, I appreciate the opportunity once again, Neil. And uh, thank you again. My pleasure, dude. So uh, thank you for your time and take care, everybody. We see each other hopefully Wednesday. If not, then uh, very, very soon. I promise. Bye-bye. No worries. Take care. And I have one more thing to ask from you guys. There is a little thing going on called the Warcraft 3 popularity contest. And that is very important to me and to everyone. And we are down to the round of 16. That is one-on-one -on -one territory right now. We eliminated 230 or 40 players already. And now we have the match of Lawlight versus Focus. And there's heavy lobbying going on by Baron and the gym community because Focus is for some reason their hero. But we know that Lawlight, you in the FFA community all know him, is the smartest, the nicest, the most creative, the coolest, the loveliest Warcraft player on the planet. One of my best friends in the scene. One of the greatest personalities we have in the scene. So if you want to do me, the godfather, a favor after everything I've done for you, then go to Twitter, to the Back to Warcraft post from earlier today, 14 hours ago. No, when was that? Earlier today. And click on Lawlight. I did that with multiple accounts, I gotta say, and help us. Currently we're leading, but never underestimate the gym community. They could come out of nowhere. They eliminated Sky tonight with boosting Ark. So that's what the gym community is capable of, but you and I, we together, can push Lawliot into the round of eight. So that's uh, what I want to have out of this. Thanks again for all the subs. Thank you, Butt Crumbs, especially. Thank you, Woody Wood, for the thousand bits. That was amazing. And we see each other maybe tomorrow, but probably on Wednesday, because I'm going to a concert tomorrow. Spanish Love Songs and Hot Mulligan. Going to be wild. If you're at the Logo in Hamburg, then hit me up as always. Take care, everybody. See you soon.